I'm glad to be here to share uh, uh, experiences and uh, with uh, with Indian coaches and Indian uh, uh, who are um, interested about football. India had uh, given me so much and. Uh, this is an opportunity to to share a little bit and to feel that I'm uh, I'm sharing something and I'm giving back something to to many of these um, uh, these wonderful people. Brilliant. Uh, the surprise is that we have another guest with us. We have a former UEFA Champions League player who has played in the African Cup of Nations. He is Mr. Khalid Fuhami. Mr. Khalid Fuhami has played for the likes of Dynamo, Bucharest, Standard Liège and more importantly, he's played as the goalkeeper for the Moroccan national team 35 times. Mr. Fuhami, are you on the line? Sid, you may have to unmute. Yes, uh, how are you? Uh, thank you for inviting me for this session and uh, I'm very glad to be with you. and. Uh, with Karim Shrifa, who is my friend, and we worked together for uh, almost two years in the national team and uh, the national direction. It helped me a lot to, to understand football and uh, give a lot for our football. He was very successful. He worked uh, with uh, under 23, under 20, and gave course for all uh, uh, Moroccan coaches. He's very, very good person and a uh, very good professional as well. And uh, I think he will give uh, all the people here uh, uh, who are with us a lot of information, useful information uh, to develop and to understand much more football. And I hope that uh, Karim Shrifa will uh, go further because he has a lot of uh, things uh, to give to our football, uh, firstly, and maybe also in India because he... Uh, Many time uh, talked to me about India and all the thing, uh, very good thing uh, happened to him, and uh, he's very very happy uh, about this uh, session. I'm I'm sure that it will be interesting uh, to hear him and share his knowledge uh, with him and with all the people who are uh, present with us uh, today. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Mr. Fahmi, for joining in. So, Mr. Karim Benjalifa has been one of the, the most successful foreign coaches in the I-League. He has won a league, he's won the Federation Cup and the Durant Cup, as was mentioned before. So, uh, Karim sir, thank you for being with us today. How are you keeping yourself busy during this period of lockdown? And what do you see the future being like for football around the world? Well, first of all, I, I would like to thank my, my colleague and friend, uh, Khalid Fuhami. Uh, Khalid Fahmi is a big, big figure in uh, Moroccan football, having uh, been the main goalkeeper of the national team of Morocco uh, 35 times. But especially one of our achievements as a national senior team was the final of the African Cup of Nations in Tunisia in 2004. Unfortunately, we lost it to uh, Tunisia and uh, Khalid Fahmi was the main goalkeeper during that competition. Uh, we have a lot of respect to each other and uh, I'm glad that he's here with us today. Um, well, you know, we are passing a very strange uh, times uh, all over the world. And uh, uh, this, is, uh, this is a time where adaptation skills comes out because we are uh, forced to do many things that we are not used to do. Uh, staying home only, uh, um, uh, adjusting with this situation, uh, but of course, uh, human being is is uh, is very uh, is uh, is uh, we 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 can adjust and adapt very well in any situation. Um, uh, as a joke, a few uh, before the COVID nineteen, my son, who is twelve years old, had bought uh, two pair of shoes from Zara, nice ones. And, and, and now he's wearing only sandals because we are only at home. So I told him you had two shoes that after the COVID, after the confinement, you cannot wear them anymore and they're brand new. So just to give you an idea that this virus make us come back to the basics. Uh, the most important thing is not what you wear, is not, uh, uh, is not uh, what, what kind of car you drive, the most important thing is the human values 
that we come back to the basics and uh, that's what teach us this uh, virus brilliant brilliant that's a great perspective now the second question is for both uh, both our experts firstly mr bencherifa we we all know you as this fantastic coach who has got results wherever you have gone in whichever team you have been at but a lot of the audience would like to know how you made the transition from a player to a coach well it's uh, to be honest uh, i i i didn't had it easy uh at my uh, when I, my passion with football started i remember very well around 5 6 years where i start kicking the ball and uh, but it was an easy task for me because i was in a family which academic are the most important to give you an idea the ben sharifa family if you google ben sharifa uh, you 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 will find out some top people uh, who are university Uh, I have an uncle who is uh, university rectors who give less uh, give lessons in uh, in universities in USA in Germany um, there is another uncle who just died who is a big uh, academic person so I was the only sports person I'm still the only sports person in the family of Ben Sharifa that's counting cousins and uncles and it was very difficult to uh, to uh, to convince the parents that this is what i need to do but i i did it and the the, the transition is is uh, is is something that it's like uh, uh, starting a new education uh, uh, phase because you start with coaching courses uh, firstly small ones at that time there was no a or c or b license uh, so i i remember i could grab any coaching course that is available i go for it i had done it even abroad uh, and uh, and from there you you start after that when the license comes out so i did the the a the pro license and that's how you do you educate yourself but if i give advice to the coaches here this uh, uh, the what you have to take right now is to make sure that every year you work even if you're not paid at the beginning you know but you go to the field and you take um, under 10 under 12 under 15 doesn't matter but be on the field with the kids with the youths uh, practice uh, tra- uh, make training session prepare yourself that is important every year you have to work so you have a cv where you have every year you had done something and the second important thing is the education also so go go on with your licenses now it's very clear the the uh, go with your licenses uh, go, now internet is a very good tool of education go watch perspective of other coaches uh, watch training of other coaches not only the top coaches like guardiola klopp maybe you're going to learn also and more from a coach uh, who is in some lower leagues because we know we cannot have uh the 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 equipments and the capabilities of what clubs like liverpool or manchester city are given so uh so that's the two main important thing and it have to go parallel is education and experience and working experience that's wonderful advice for all the budding coaches now my question the same question for mr fuami Mr Fuami how did you go from being a very successful player in the UEFA Champions League and in the African Cup of Nations to starting a coaching career Mr Fuami I think there's a problem with the connection, connection maybe with maybe. Mr Fuami Okay, so okay. we'll uh, once he can rejoin, we'll ask him that question. The next question. Uh, I know, I'll, unmute, I'll unmute him. I think. Uh, okay. The Puami, okay. he muted himself, so I'll just unmute him one second. All right. Just let me know when he's uh, when he's on the line. Sure, sure. So just while this happens, uh, just to tell you, Mr. Karim, uh, there are many audience here. There are players, there are coaches. There's a there's a commentator. There are. Can I can I answer? So it's nice. Yes, uh, Mr. Fuami. My question was that you were a successful player in the UEFA Champions League and the African Cup of Nations. How did you make that transition from being a successful player to a coach? 
first of all, I, I like football so much. So is my yes, yes. Can you yes. just go back a little bit because we cannot see you properly? Okay. Okay, that's good better. now. Thank you. Okay. Uh, yes. Uh, first of all, football is my passion. I like it so much. So it's not uh, only uh, playing or working football. I watch so many matches, and uh, I can stay all day uh, reading and uh, uh, watching matches. And I want to know uh, every detail of football. And uh, that's why after my career, during my career, I uh, I was uh, uh, starting to think about what I will do after that. So. Uh, uh, when I were, were playing in Portugal, I started my coaching badges and after that uh, I, I played because I, uh, I went back to Morocco to finish my career during four years and uh, I, I, uh, I worked with some uh, younger player when I was uh, still playing. After that I had the opportunity to, be, to form a part of uh, DTA, National uh, Technical Direction for uh, many years and I worked with some famous coaches uh, as uh, uh, Mark Watt, now he's working in, in uh, Emirates, uh, also uh, Pim Verbeek and a lot of, a lot of uh, coaches. And uh, as I said, I, I, I like football so much and uh, I prepared myself before uh, finishing my career. That's why uh, I didn't have any problem after that to work especially and in the beginning with goalkeepers. So uh, to give you just one idea, uh, all the three goalkeepers now in the first uh, national team, I work with them. And uh, for many years, that's why they are now uh, I, very good because I give them a lot of experience and only, also a lot of working with them. And uh, now, uh, as uh, uh, Karim said, I am starting another challenge to be head coach. I, I have all my license. I have a lot of experience. And I worked with many, many uh, famous coaches in Europe, uh, just uh, like uh, Arthur George, who is Portuguese, or also Malucescu is Romanian. He worked with Inter Milan and uh, a lot of other clubs. So I, I think that I'm more than prepared to be head coach because I like football so much. And uh, I have uh, some uh, uh, friends like uh, Karim Benshrifa who helped me a lot and gave me a lot of advice. So it's my passion. I like it so much. Football. I want to 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 be as successful as I was in my career as a coach, as a goalkeeper. And uh, okay, I think uh, it's my passion. I like so much. I love so much football. Great, well, brilliant passion for the game. Uh, there are some good questions coming up already, so we'll just address that in some time. So, Mr. Benjarifa, you made your entry into Indian football with the newly promoted Churchill Brothers in 2006. Coaching a young team and nearly winning the title with them. What was your two years at Churchill Brothers team like? Okay, I just want to add something about uh, Khalid, uh, which is a good perspective for the coaches who are with us. Uh, Khalid was more busy than me uh, as a player because he was international player. And you know, the top, the top uh, playing in Europe, in Romania, in Belgium, demand a lot uh, but uh, what i what i what i want to advise and khalid had done it is that he he spent a lot of time to educate himself because as a player especially when you have a big career you don't have the time to to learn things but but what i like in khalid and i always discuss it with him it's not because he's here and i discuss it with people behind his back is is that he educate himself khalid have uh, I think he read all the biographies of the top coaches, uh, uh, learn new languages. Uh, another important thing for coaches now is the technology tool. You need to, that now coaches are not allowed anymore to not know how to use a computer, how to make a PowerPoint presentation, how to use the video analyst. Uh, all this is very important and I, that's why I want to highlight the fact that uh, Khalid is a, is a person who, who wasn't there but managed to catch up uh, despite his long career to catch up with what is needed for the job of a coach right now. Uh, communication, communication skills and languages and the technology tools and, uh, and so on. Uh, coming back to your question uh, about Churchill, 
uh, you know, I'm, uh, people have to know something. And, and that's why uh, I think uh, the Indian coaches right here, you have to understand that Karib Ben Sharifa is not uh, from Spain, uh, not an ex-player of Barcelona or Real Madrid, uh, not an ex-English Premier League player. Because these, these uh, coaches, when they come from a background like this, it's easier. You know, it's uh, because they have a publicity behind them. Uh, while Karim, I always, in all the countries where I was, I started with the very small teams. Uh, in Singapore, I started with a club that lost, played 11 games and lost all of them and was bottom of the league. Uh, and in India, I came with Churchill. And remember, Churchill wasn't that powerhouse. Churchill was just come, promoted from second division. The season before I come, Churchill was a team that just promoted. Uh, I saw Vinay Singh uh, uh, present here among the audience. He was there and he could uh, tell you also about that experience. We, uh, Churchill, uh, Mr. Churchill Alemar, the president, has released many players and had hired many players from Tata Academy, young players. I think the average age that we had was about 21. And uh, it wasn't easy. In fact, uh, maybe only me and Churchill himself that believed on that team. All the people, even the people who are surrounding Churchill, was asking me to convince him to sign big name players or experienced players. But I believed on that squad and we start working very well. Uh, we, we set up a very good uh, way of work uh, with my, I start from now saying my philosophy is I, I see the team like a table. You know, the table, when you have it in your living room, it has four legs. Uh, and if you take one leg, the table will fall down. Three legs are not enough. And the team is like that. And the legs of a, of a, of a good team and to be successful and to be consistently successful because the, uh, uh, winning sometimes and throwing a lot and losing also a lot is not successful. But winning a lot and drawing a little and losing rarely, that is consistency. And to reach that, the first leg is you need good players. And when I say good players, I add to that good human beings. You know, not bad people. I mean, as a character, as a personality, you need to find the right quality players in terms of technique, tactic, but you need to find uh, good people, people who, who are humble, people who are into positives, people that are not, uh, you know, uh, selfish or many, many, uh, you know what I mean. The second leg is this, this team, these players have to be super fit which means have to play high standard level in 90 minutes. The third leg is this team have to be tactically sound, organized, strategically. And when I say about tactic, tactics, it's not I bring a style and a system and I put it in. No, it's about this, these current players, how they are, what is their quality and finding a system that will suit them. And the fourth leg, which is the most important, is team spirit, you know, having a group of people. And when you manage to have the four, trust me, you are unbeatable. But if one leg is missing, one, the, the table will fall, will, will come down. If you have a good team organized tactically, physically very strong, and have a good team spirit, but tactic, technically, they are not good players. Your centre-back will do a mistake, a costly mistake of controlling the pass or miss pass, and you're going to lose because of technique. And you may have good players on technique, well-organised, very good team spirit, but the fitness is poor. You may play one hour very well and lose in the last 20 minutes because you're not fit enough, and so on. You need the four legs to, to succeed. And that's what we installed in Churchill Brothers that time. First year, everybody said we're going to relegate. We end up fourth of the league. And second year, we won the Durham Cup. 
and went on to almost winning the the the, the I League. Uh, as you know, we end up in the same point as Dempo, and they won the league because of four goal difference. And it's funny because Odafa Okoli was the top scorer, and the second top scorer was Mboyo, um, the second foreigner, second striker who was with my team, and yet Dempo had scored more than us. Yes, I mean, the way you explain shows why you have won, where, won trophies wherever you have been. Uh, we are going to take the audience question after this question. So, you spoke about Odafa. Now, everyone knows Odafa. He's probably been one of the, the best foreigners to have ever played in uh, India. But this is a slightly controversial kind of question. So, he has made a reputation of being difficult to manage. So, how did you deal with him to get the best out of him? Well, I just remind you of when I came to Churchill, uh, Odafa wasn't yet the star that he became, right? Because when I came to Churchill, uh, Odafa had played in the second division with Churchill, right? And before that, Odafa had played center back with Mohammedan, okay? Another team. And uh, so Odafa was about three years in India before I came in, all right? And uh, it was easier. I wouldn't say the character of Odafa is, uh, is uh, a bit difficult, true, You'd, but you just have to understand him. But me, I, had, uh, I think I had a special position with him. Why? Uh, in fact, if you want me to tell you the story of my first meeting with Odafa, uh, I, I don't mind sharing it with the people because it's a, it's a lesson how to do so when I came to Churchill and I met the president, the chairman, he told me we have, uh, uh, regarding the foreigners, this is before uh, Odafa came or we start in the team. So one of the, in one of the meetings, we talk about the foreign players. And uh, Churchill defined for me the foreigners that exist. He told me we have Osmanu. Osmanu was another known player, center back but he was at the end of his career. And we, he told me we have Odafa, but he told me he wasn't convinced. He told me he's lazy, um, he doesn't train regularly, and it's your call. If you like to keep him, keep him. If you don't like to keep him, we find another one. Now, when I talk to my staff, uh, and here I want to open little bracket, uh, that all the success that I had in India would, would not have been possible without uh, the support of my backroom staff. The assistant, the manager, the goalkeeper coach, the fitness trainer, in some teams, the video analyst. All these people have done tremendous job. It's not only Kareem's success, it's our success. Uh, and I would like to, to, to uh, uh, pay tribute to all these people who have helped me a lot there. So the staff of Churchill was very honest with me, uh, Mario Suarez, Denzel. Uh, we discussed the situation of Odafa, and they told me that coach, uh, he doesn't like to train regularly. And you know, the, when you don't train regularly, you are prone to injuries. So basically, the season in second division, uh, the staff told me Odafa is excellent player, but there is these problems that are going on. <clears throat> so for me, uh, uh, as I said, there, are, there might be some of my ex-players here. <clears throat> they know that I'm a person of, uh, of good communication, but I'm a person of discipline as well. I always put in place a code of conduct, <clears throat> uh, code of conduct which, uh, which, uh, which is important to run a team, a football team. And uh, I cannot do too many adjustments. Uh, I can, yes, the way I talk to a youngster of 20 years is not the same the way I talk to uh, a player on his 30s and married and have kids. Uh, it can be some adjustment. But the, there, there is a, uh, a frame of work that should be there. So I did a plan for Odafa, uh, especially that they told me he's a good player. So I remember... On purpose, 
uh, we started the, the preseason and after 10 days, Odafa came. And on purpose, I, it's, it's a plan. I'm telling you now, it's a plan. It looked like I was angry, but no. I wanted to get Odafa into the system of my work. So the first meeting was bad. Like, like the first meeting where I usually, a player come in, I say hi to him. How are you? How was holiday? My first meeting with Odafa coming in is, these are the words that I said and I remember them. Hey, uh, you're late to preseason. Are you professional? This is not good. You know, I criticize immediately. Uh, and, and of course, Odafa didn't like it. Uh, and I remember he took his scooter and went to the chairman and complained. But the good thing is the chairman backed me. He said, he's the boss, he decide, right? So then I, next day, I avoid to talk to him. In fact, Mario Suarez was the assistant because I told Odafa, hey, 10 days you wasn't here. You need to catch up with the fitness of the, of the rest of the team. All this is a plan on purpose because I want to make sure that Odafa understand that it's no more like before, that you have to train, you have to... Uh, and I wasn't, I was ready to change if, uh, to get another player. But for me, since he is a good player, I heard, I wanted to keep him. So second day, I told, the, I told Odafa that Mario will take care of you now till you get your fitness. And I gave a good program of fitness, a lot of running, a lot, all the things that any player don't like, and especially a player like Odafa. So initially he was about four days, five days, he was very angry, but doing that, because otherwise he had, also he had a choice, either to do that or he could go as well. After like four or five days, uh, things went right. And then after we had, I think another incident that I have to talk to is we had to go to play the first match of preseason. Odafa came not very late. I was, I wanted to send messages, so he came, uh, I think I asked the driver of the bus, everybody's there, he said yes. I said go. Uh, and I think he was late like two, three minutes. And we won't, without the, the player. Then he came with his uh, uh, motorbike. And then uh, he said sorry and all that. So anyway, it was very tense for about two weeks. Then I think after 10 days, he understand that, okay, this is good for me, I have to train. And he understand also that this coach, my God, is, is too, too strong, too hard. And then he start training on join. By that time, he joined the team already. And when he starts on join, for almost two weeks, hardly I talk to him. And then all of a sudden, when I noticed that he's in, I came to him after a training session and I asked him, uh, Odafa, are you free this evening? He said, yes, coach. He was surprised. I say, let's go for dinner. And I invited him for dinner. And on that dinner, I, he find another, uh, he didn't find, because there is Karim, the coach, but I meet him as Karim, the man. Very nice, ask him about his family. And he was surprised. So I, 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 I told him that, uh, and I explained to him why I'm doing this and why he should be fit and why uh, all, all this and what is the difficulty as a coach to to not follow him in what he's doing. And I told him, you are the leader of the team. You should help me to, to get others fit, not to make, uh, because if you don't come for a training session and I don't do anything about it, then I have problem with the rest of the group. I will lose respect. So we talked this discussion and it was fantastic. And after that, 100%. And if you notice now, I gave you the, I gave you the key of why Odafa became successful. Because I didn't give Odafa the skills. He have them. God gifted. Both feet, very strong, could score with left or right. Uh, but I, what I gave him is the fitness. He became fit. And when he, you are strong technically and you are super fit, he, dest he could destroy everybody. First game, we won Sporting by 2-0. Second game, we want to play Mahindra in Mumbai. Mahindra was champion of the season with Barreto, Surkumar, and all that. And everybody said they will hammer us. They, 
we could have won the game. They scored first half, second half. We played a very aggressive hot 3-3. We scored, Odafa scored. was fantastic. We missed many chances. And that game, Churchill brothers and Odafa was born. Because at the press conference, everybody was asking me, where did you get number nine? Odafa. I say, hey, he was here for three years. Oh, really? So that's the new Odafa, and that's how it happened. And then uh, I'm, I coach him for two seasons. I coach him in Mohan Bagan. In fact, in Mohan Bagan, he was part of why I came back, because he's the one who told the, the management that, Karim, we need to get him back if you want to do something. And uh, I think Odafa, maybe it was more difficult with other coaches, but with me, I don't think he will ever forget that. Because remember, Odafa was on less than 3,000 when I came. And Odafa of Mohan Bagan, he was, I think, about $40,000 a month. So he, he would understand, anybody would understand that this guy have helped me to, to pick up my career. The, you have made two very important messages here for the players that if you don't train properly, then there are injuries and for coaches, the importance of man management. Now, before we go to your time at Mohan Bagan, we'll just get a few questions. There are a few interesting questions here, which you can just answer if you're okay with it. Uh, Yash Survase, who's a, who's a local player, a youth player, he asks, what specific difference do you notice between Indian and foreign style of playing football? One good thing you like the most in Indian football and foreign football? I don't think there is such things called uh, foreign football and Indian football. Styles, style of play now, only few, few, even internationally, even in foreign football, only few, very few clubs and few coaches can say, I have a style. And I'm going to do it everywhere I go. Guardiola, for example. He have a style. He go to Bayern Munich. He recruits the players that will fit his style. And he will not change his style. He will go to Manchester City. He will recruit the players that suit his style. And he will impose his style. Maybe Klopp in, uh, in Liverpool uh, have a certain style. But he have the players to suit the style. If you notice, uh, it, when he missed only one of the three top strikers, Mane, Salah, and Firmino, if one is missing, the style is different. And he find it different. So these coaches and these clubs, they have the funds to have a style. But otherwise, like me, coaches like me, uh, or many even abroad, the style, you have to adjust it. I, uh, I was discussing yesterday with, uh, with some people who, and I get this question a lot, where do you put Indian footballers or Indian football? Uh, of course, we, we, we are still uh, far. We still have to work hard to, to, to get the, where, where the high standard belong. But I think there is many, many players in India who could play in a higher level as well. And some have proved it. Sunit Chetri, Bai Chung. Uh, guys, and again, to this uh, guy who asked the question, and to the Indian coaches, please don't underestimate yourself. Get out, don't be shy. You know, don't, don't keep sitting back and allowing your, your, as a player, as a coaches, and allowing foreign players to come in and, and take the limelight and allowing... Uh, foreign coaches to come and take the limelight. G get out and prove yourself and be take risks. I tell you, my first my first team abroad was 2000 in Malta. Uh, the biggest derby in Malta is between Floriana and Valletta, and I coach Floriana. Uh, there was one German uh, lady who was at the German embassy helped me a lot. She's the one who made the contact with the chairman because I had Leipzig. Uh, coaching course diploma uh, so the, I think the president before he met me he since he he got the recommendation from the German embassy and I have a German diploma uh, he thought uh, okay this guy is but when I came and he saw me I'm young uh, I'm uh, 
from a country that never coach in Malta. In Malta, most coaches are from England or Italy, the foreign coaches. Uh, I tell you, I wasn't equipped. Uh, deep inside me, I was scared. From the uh, just going to the field, I'm scared. But I, I had one quality that, if you look at me when I talk to the president, I'm talking like I'm Guardiola. You know, uh, the way uh, the, my body language in the field and with the chairman was like I am super confident. But deep, if you ask me inside me and now when I go back to those years, I wasn't ready. I was scared. But I don't show it. So that's what Indian coaches and Indian players have to, have to believe on themselves and take some risks. And, and, uh, and uh, even at times... Uh, push for their opportunities. That's the advice that I'm getting. All right. So now we'll uh, go to because, your... Sorry. Excuse yeah. me. Because, because if some coaches have reached good level of coaching, talking about Derek Pereira and others, and if some players have knocked on the high, high level, Sandesh, uh, uh, Sunil Chetri, Bai Chung, and, and I can go on, uh, the problem is in Indian football is not uh, is that we need to get thousands, hundreds of Sunil Chetri on the field, the likes of him. If he can do it, he's from where? He's also from India. I remember how he started. I talked to him two days ago or yesterday to congratulate him for his milestone 100 games for the, the anniversary of his 100 games, international games. And I reminded him, I told him, I would remind you of, of one game. That's the day when I turned to Mario Suarez, my assistant coach in Churchill, during 2006-2007 season. My first season in India, we was watching the, the TV and the JCT was playing. Referee whistled a free kick on the side for JCT. And here is this young player, Sunil Chetri. He had the common sense, like what you see in Europe, because most, most players, normal players, they will wait. They don't have that, that uh, smartness, that uh, quick decision-making. But uh, uh, Sunil Chetri put his hand on the ball, had a look at the striker, and the other team was still organizing the wall, the setting up in the defense. He put his hand on the ball, played quick goal. The other team didn't know what happened. But who made that goal is Sunil Chetri, young player at that age, and he was already sharp. And I turned to Mario, I said, uh, did you see what just happened? Who is that player? You know, he, he's, he's good because it's about thinking. Brilliant, brilliant. Great experience. So, uh, now we'll talk about when you reached the Mecca of football. So, in 2008, you made your entry into the passionate home of Indian football, Kolkata. How did you deal with the constant media attention, scrutiny from fans and derbies with East Bengal? Uh, the, the switch from Churchill to Mohan Bagan, I want to share one story, which is a lesson as well for our coaches. Uh, if you remember, uh, and I'm, I'm saying it publicly because anyone can pick up the phone and talk to the concerned person. I had, uh, I brought Mboyo, second season of Churchill. I don't know if you remember Mboyo. Mboyo Yomi from Congo. He was playing near man. I brought him to Churchill that season. He was, uh, I think we signed him for about 3,000, I think, a month. 3,000 US dollars. And then uh, he ended up second top scorer. And I, at the end of the season, I got a good offer from uh, Mohan Bagan. And he got a very good offer from Dempo. And we are at the end of the season. We finished the season. Still, I need to pack. And, uh, you know, those three, four days before you leave, I'm packing and I have to leave the house and and go back to my country and then prepare and also with Mohan Bagan. So I got a call. I think he signed for about 12, 12K, which is big improvement from three to 12, seven top score. 
So he called me, coach, can I come see you? I said, yes, no problem. And uh, he come, he come to my house and uh, uh, he had, I don't know, 5K or something. And he told me, coach, I would like to thank you. Uh, and please accept this gift because uh, I, uh, because I, it's thanks to you. I was earning very less in Yemen and you brought me to church and because of you and your training and your style of play, attacking style that allowed me to score many goals. Boyu is a very mature player at that time. And because of that, I, I had now a good contract and I want to thank you. Please, a little gift for the kids and all that. I, I pushed that thing. I said, you take back your stuff. And I told him, hey, that is your money and your family money. You, yes, maybe I helped you, but you already helped me as well. I just signed a good contract in Mohan Bagan. And I signed that contract because of the plenty of goals that you had scored as well on the field. So your help, you have already done it by performing well. And, uh, and I convinced him that he have to take back his that and I didn't take a penny from him. The lesson here is, don't you ever be weak with material stuff. Keep your pride and keep your personality. Because if as a coach you will accept such things, you will become weak with the players as well. Can you imagine how can, I, how can a player respect you by the fact that you accepted a gift from him such in such way? You, uh, I don't know if you understand what I mean. So yeah. this is very, very important. You have to be a coach of principle. You, you have to be a, a coach of, uh, of, of uh, pride. So you can keep always respect of the players. Because the players, if you do a mistake, for me it's a mistake if I had accepted ever. Because people talk. The player himself would come and go and say, oh, the coach helped me and I give him a gift. And you lose your, your name a bit. And you lose the respect. Uh, you, uh, especially if, if it happened that you coach him again. Now imagine I accept and I coach him again. Will he be the same respect towards me? I don't think so. So be careful from that. Don't you ever be weak in terms of, of these kind of things which happen everywhere in, in, in the world. So, um, so then uh, this is just between brackets because I feel it's important. Uh, and uh, I went to Mohan Bagan. Uh, it, was, uh, it was another, another level, you know, in, in Goa. You have the beach, the shack, you can relax. You, 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 people love football in Goa. Don't, uh, don't, uh, I'm not saying. They love football. They are passionate. But people in Goa, they are laid back and they give you your space. You know, they, they, they don't invade you. In Calcutta, it's the opposite. The, they are super passionate. And the, my start was very difficult. You know, I'm coming with a big reputation. The fans are super happy to have me. During preseason, I felt that. I was already their star. Uh, and uh, they, they used to come to the ground. The media also was very positive about my coming. But the media are tricky because they, they feel, okay, we're going we gotta to write stories with this guy. And, uh, and the management, of course, they was happy to, to have me with them, Mr. Debashish and uh, Tutu Bos and Tumpai and all that. And uh, we started, when you coach Mohan Bagan, and remember, I came to Mohan Bagan, and I think about 10 years before, Mohan Bagan didn't win anything, anything. And not only that, during my two years that I was there, but I know also before, uh, Mohan Bagan hardly keep the coach for more than six months, four months, five months, and he's gone. Foreigners or locals. So when I came, uh, the first five games of the league, we didn't win. We didn't have a good start. And I was almost on the way out because uh, what I salute is the, the, the management stayed, yeah, there was patience with me. 
and uh, some fans start turning against me, some media, but most of the media, most of the fans, there was maybe waiting for this, uh, the next game, the magic of Karim will come. So, and we, the, the way we turn the table was amazing. We was under pressure, and remember in that team, Bai Chung, Barreto, uh, I mean, the, only these two in your, in your team put pressure on you to win the games. And we had to play in, uh, in, uh, in Goa, the sixth game in Goa, against Dempo. Dempo, fantastic team. The, the team that play possession, that doesn't give you the ball. And uh, I think about, uh, about 25 minutes or so, red card for us. Imagine a game that we have to win and red card. We still 0-0. Zero, zero. Red card for a player called Vashan, I think Vashan, uh, was uh, centre-back. Um, I warm up a centre back, and I, uh, I I cannot remember the name, but I I took a I think a side back. I put him centre back, and I uh, I put another one on the on the uh, on the side back, and that is the first game where I learn what is the best way to play with ten player. What is the best setup? Because usually when you play with ten players, you play four at the back four midfielders and one striker because it's normal in your mind the coach mind the player's mind oh panic we are one less so we have to make sure we don't concede okay so you play more like this but when you play like this is basically to really not concede and to to be under pressure and when you win the ball you usually lose it very quick because you have your striker very isolated you have nobody to connect with. But what I did on that game, I played like a 4-4-2 diamond. The midfield was on diamond, one holding mid, one on the left, one on the right, not on the wings, but central, and one number 10 and two strikers, that's the diamond midfield. But for, when we was with 10, I had on top of the diamond Barreto and striker just behind Baichuk. That's how we played. So we defend basically with seven. Even if Barreto doesn't come back on time, we are okay with seven. But when we attack, I pushed the side backs. This we, we organize it at halftime. Because, uh, and I didn't do the substitution because I was going to, to make a substitution to put a, a pure center back. But after the, the red card, the team reacted very well and we was okay till halftime. At halftime, I sense, I said, guys, even a draw is not good for us. I mean, if we draw, it's okay, but we need to win. These five games, we didn't win. Uh, just try. And we did that setup. 4-3-1-1. One, one. And uh, when we lose the ball, we defend 4-3-1-1. One, one, and everybody work. When we attack, uh, I have like the two midfield, uh, one holding mid, one number six. The two side mid became like two number 10s and Barreto joined Baichung as a striker and also encouraging the side backs to overlap and go more in an attacking way. And we was balanced game. We, we was in the game. We create chances and then we got a penalty. We score it. As soon as we score, I, I was back to 4-4-1. Four, four, that means I, I said, okay, we got the goal. We shut down everything, and we won that game. And from that game, if you, as you know, we did that record that still stand of 10 wins on a row from that game. Win, 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 win. And you, you, can, you, you would understand how was the fans, how was the team, how was the media. I mean, it was amazing. And in the 10 wins, I think three games we played with 10 players. But always, when I get 10, 4-3-1-1, not 4-4-1. Four, four, that's what uh, that's great, that's was amazing great, time. That's a great experience. So in that season, yeah, you had... The, yeah. And with the Mohan Bagan, we had fantastic stuff. We had one, the... We... we um, I tell you, with my, in my tenure with Mohan Bagan, another important thing, 
you know that I stayed with Churchill for two years. Young team, uh, convinced Odafa about the fitness and the regular training, uh, prepared Nauba, Paite, Robert, young players became so mature. And in my tenure with Mohambagan, if I wasn't, if I didn't prepare well Churchill, I, I would have won everything. Because, because, uh, in fact, one headline of one newspaper in Calcutta, in one final, Churchill Mohambagan, they wrote Karim versus Karim. You understand? Because this is the team that just uh, finished, and I'm play, and, and I'm coaching Mohambagan because we Mohambagan, we was runner up of the I League. Okay, till last game, who was the champion? Churchill. We was, uh, we won Super Cup uh, against who? Against Churchill. We um, won the Federation Cup. We won the Calcutta League. We lost the final of Durham Cup. Final against who? Churchill. We lost the final of IFA Shield against who? Churchill. So either we are first and Churchill second, or Churchill first and Mohan Bagan second. So, and, and it was amazing. And it was a really a feeling, mixed feeling, because I'm, I'm happy that we, we did well and we won some, some trophies. I'm happy for those players that I have worked with for two years, that they won some trophies as well. But I was very angry, how comes a coach just come and find, I put the tree, I took care of it, it grow, and he come and took the fruit. <laughs> you know, that's, that's how important it is for a coach to lay the correct foundation. So, talking yeah. about Mohan, we'll just do two more questions and then into the audience again. In that season, you trained Bhai Chung Bhutia, Bareto, Sioka, Lal Kamal Bhamik, Ishfaq Ahmed, Shailo Mama, Deepak Mandal, Mohan Raj, the list continues. In the next season, you had Surkumar Singh, Chidi Ade, Marcos, etc. As a coach, what was your strategy of man management to keep a dressing room full of superstars happy? I think as a coach, you, as I told you, you, uh, what, I, what, I, what I try, but this is, um, I don't do it just blindly. Um, usually when I go to a team, I put a written code of conduct. It's written. Uh, my style of management is this. I usually coaches, they will have in a team, captain, vice captain, and maybe second vice captain. Um, for me, I, I do it slightly different. And, and those kind of coaches, they, they focus on the captain. Anything they want to discuss about the team issues, they want to share something, they will discuss with the captain. Of course, there is the staff, technical staff, but they will discuss with the captain. Uh, I don't do it this way. I, uh, I uh, especially when I was in India, uh, uh, and not maybe not at uh, Churchill and Mohanbagan. Maybe Mohanbagan, I started that. Because as a coach, you get better with years, you know? Uh, there are many things that I, it's not that I came uh, there are many things that you learn while you're coaching. And this is what I learned, is that I, I choose, there's the captain, vice captain, and second vice captain. Those are three. And usually I add between two to four players, other. Um, you know, in India, you have uh, players from Punjab, players from Goa, play, Bengali players, um, uh, Ka Karnataka or Kerala players and you know India though it's one country but different cultures different uh, languages uh, we should not forget that that uh, we should not forget that uh, uh, when you coach players you're coaching human beings it's very important and you're coaching a human being with different background uh, different religions different culture and this has to be taken so when I choose those extra four players like in Salgaukar I had many Punjabi players I had the captain Luciano uh, I, I, I don't remember the, the few other captains uh, there was Rokus Lamar 
and Rokas from Northeast, and I had Northeast players. So I add among the three extra players, I added Karanjit Singh, the goalkeeper, and I added some other players. So whenever I have, uh, like the when I come before the start of the season, before I discuss the code of conduct, I do a meeting between me, my staff, and these six players. Meeting, serious meeting, where I explain seriously every point of the code of conduct. The timing, the use of a phone, mobile phone, the, the respect of the plan of the coach and the system and strategies during the game, the no need of stupid cards during the games, all this. And I uh, say point by point. And I, uh, and I open discussion. I ask, what's your opinion? Uh, sometimes they may tell you, coach, this uh, uh, is it not too hard? The fact that we don't use, for example, I would say, uh, just giving an example, uh, we should not use the mobile phone in the dressing room, in the bus going to the game, uh, and even on the day of the game. They will say, oh, coach, for example, they will say, coach, but the day of the game, we receive some motivating messages from our family or something. Then I'm able to accept it. You understand? I will, I will listen and maybe understand that this is important. So I would say, okay, no problems. But the dressing room is important that we don't use the phone and the bus going to the game, we don't use the phone. They will say, oh, okay, coach. Okay, we take off during the day of the game. I just give you an example. So it, it's, an, it's a discussion. And then I come up with the final code of conduct. And then I do the meeting with the whole team. Because what happened as coaches? We control when we are there. But when we have problem is when we are not there. You, you understand? When, for example, you come with a change of a system or because change of a system, you play 4-3-3. If you are a center midfielder, I'm playing 4-4-2. And I come and I say, we'll change it to 4-3-3. The center midfielder is not working as much Maybe his work, he will work more, he will run more in a 4-3-3. He will be unhappy. Or maybe if I change to 4-3-3, one of the starters of 4-4-2 will end up on the bench. He's not happy. And when I come to the field with the team and I say we change to 4-3-3, or I say we, we will put this code of conduct, when they go dressing room, the players, you are not with them. I, and you have to imagine what will happen. They will start, some will start complaining. And if my system of work and man management of the players help, because if I didn't do the meeting with the six players and I just came and throw it, the dressing room, they will complain and they will get like a mutiny against you and they will come back the next day, different team spirit. And maybe next game you will lose because of that. You didn't know. But when you embark with you, your senior players, which I call them the pillars of the team, and they understand what you are doing, why you change the system, why you are putting a code of conduct, it will happen the same. One of the young players, you change the system, you put the code of conduct at the dressing room, you are not there. One will say, oh, I don't know why coach changed the system. This is not good. What he's doing? One of the six players will shut it down and will talk because he's with you in the, in the boat. You, you put him with you. He agreed with you. And he will explain to that boy, maybe even in a rough way, to tell him, hey, what are you doing? Uh, it's for our good. Uh, who are you to talk like? So they will defend you. But actually, they are not defending you. They are defending the team because they understand the importance of that. In the dressing room, all happened in the dressing room after training, after the game, uh, during shower. That's where the coach win or lose with the players. And usually in the dressing room, I, I compare it to little fire. You know, that guy who complained is little fire. So what do your, one of your six important players that you already embarked, he will put water on that fire and uh, take it out. Because if it's not out, another fire, 
then the dressing room, the whole dressing room will be on fire. So this is how I used to work. A lot of communication and especially embarking the senior players with whatever you think, whatever you do, especially the most important thing, including, I'm not saying here, a good coach, you have to take tough decisions, including sacking a player in the middle of the season. If he's not within your, your work, performance, discipline, but that decision, like uh, I can share a small story. When I was with Salgo Car, just pulsing uh, uh, against my will and the will of the club, he, want, he said he wanted to be married in the middle of the season. We were having tough games. And he was my starting right back. And then he went and we gave him two weeks or 10 days, but he stayed one month. And when he came back, I didn't want to accept anymore. But Jaspal Singh was the body of Karanjit Singh, my first goalkeeper. They share the same room. They are very close. And Karanjit Singh was part of those six players that I discussed with. So I did a meeting, staff, six players. The, the, the meeting was about Jaspal Singh. And I told them, this is what happened. This is what happened. This is what happened. And now I decided to do this. And of course, because the argument that I give was valid, including Karanjit. He couldn't say, because I talked to him, I say, any problem on that? Because I can't keep, now we are almost at the end of the season. He, be, he came back unfit we, because we did test for him. We found him completely, uh, he cannot. And I, and I, and I, uh, I, I send him. I didn't want to accept him anymore because he became a problem for the team. Because my, my duty is not to protect individuals. My duty is to protect the team. And anyone who will harm the team, I better get rid of him because if, it, if I don't do it, the team will suffer. And when That's you do great. those tough decisions, yeah. when you do those tough decisions, the rest of the players respect you because you didn't do it out of hate or you did it as a professional coach. That's a great lesson on man management. Now, speaking of man management, Two players who were supposed to have a lot of talent and tip for great heights were Lalam Puya and Henry Gangte, both of whom you coached at Mohan Bagan. When did it go wrong for them and what would your advice be to young footballers to stay focused on the game? You know, a footballer is not is an individual, but he's, uh, he's in the middle of a society, you know, uh, especially young footballer. He's not yet... Uh, on his own, uh, flying with his own wings. He depends on some friends, some family members. And if he's not well guided, he will fail. Especially you, you gave the example of two players who, who are in the environment of Calcutta football, uh, which is Calcutta football, like, like uh, even for coaches. You know, when you win games, you think you... Uh, you think you are flying, you're in another planet. And if you don't stay, keep your feet firm on the ground and humble, you, you will fail even as a coach because the media especially, they, they love to, to praise you during your good times because the more they push you high, the more your fall will be enjoyable for them <laughs> because you will fall from very, very high. So you have to be careful. The more they praise you, the more you keep your feet firm on the ground. And with young players in that environment, if a young player just score a goal, make one good game, the media, the fans, they will put him very high. And the problem, for me, I know how to manage it. Number one, because I'm more mature age-wise. I know I have experience of life. So I know how to keep my feet. But for a youngster who is 20, 19, he's lost. And uh, he, uh, when you, they put him high and he signed a new good contract with good money, then comes girls, then comes alcohol, then comes many, many things. And unfortunately, as a coach, you, you can't manage everything. You cannot. Simply, you cannot. So it's the... It's the environment, that's where comes the family for the player, the, the good friends, 
the like with Puy, I we tried everything. Trust me, I took it as a challenge, as a personal challenge. I involve. I think even we change his uh, his uh, house or something, and we make him live with a mature player. And I involve Baichum, Barreto. Uh, we tried our best, but it couldn't happen. So it it's also depend of the background and the. Uh, sometimes a player fail is not because of the club or the coach or his teammates, but sometimes player fail because he wasn't well equipped in his uh, early education in the environment where he live as a kid, as a, as a youngster from six, 10, 15. And those, uh, uh, it became a personality that uh, very fragile. So that's, and, and especially maybe, Maybe uh, Puya and uh, Gangte, Henri Gangte, if, maybe if there was a club in Goa, maybe they would survive better. Uh, because Calcutta, you have the hype and the pressure. And these are two things very dangerous for a player. Wonderful. There's, uh, before we go to the segment of your successful stint with Salgaukar. If, uh, just... Excuse me. Yes. Excuse me, I'm really sorry. If Khalid is still with us, uh, he's not. He's use not. Use him as well, because yeah, to be honest, not. especially he's. his. Yeah. Yes, I mean, so it's just a suggestion. If you, if if the if the crowd, if the coaches want to ask him a question or something, he could also intervene because he's a. He in Morocco, he's a star. In Morocco, he's a star. Yeah. <laughs> so he's great. Okay. Uh, okay. I'll read the another question from the audience. Huh? Abhishek Fadke asks. Is the quality of I-League players up to the mark to play in the national squad? And what are all the things required for a player to get there? Uh, tell me again. Okay, so I'll just read it, I'll just read it out again. Uh, his question is, is the quality of I-League players up to the mark to play in the national squad? And what are the things required for a player to get there? So, what he means is, what are the qualities required to play for the Indian national team? Uh, yeah, maybe he's he's putting. I understand his question. Maybe he's he's putting it in the perspective of Indian football right now. Because for me, it it felt a bit strange. Because when I was coaching in India, there was the I League is the main tournament. So of course, I League players are the base of the national team. Um, for me, if I if I'm uh, what I what I feel a player need to have at the international level to succeed, is is basically the four, the four pillars that I just gave you. He need to be to have a very good technique. He need to work a lot on his fitness because the international level require more than the I League, and uh, he need to be. Uh, you know, the players who succeed are not necessarily the best technical players, but another quality that I give, and I, in my career, even in India, uh, okay, one example is Gilbert de Oliveira, the young player that I was, when I was with Salgo Kar, I put him uh, with the squad for one month, hardly one month, train with us, and then make his start against uh, Prayag and scored the fastest goal of the I-League and scored two goals and was man of the match in his first start of the I-League. And the quality of that, he wasn't the best, but the quality that he had is he understand quickly. That is important. You know, the coach, I, when I talk to him, if I give an observation or an advice or a tactical instruction, I just need to say it once and it's over. He will never forget it. He will do it. And then, uh, because he do it, he will become better. And then comes new mistakes that he do. Hey, Kilbert, when you move here, uh, for example, just uh, he used to play on the, on the flank. Uh, Gilbert, if you, have a, if you have the ball and the right back is behind you, close, the defender, fix the... The fix the, the the left back of the opposition, but drag him inside. Okay, that like this way, 
you will, uh, your right back will go and will be free on that space. But don't release the pass before this, the left back is really close to you. Because if you release while he's still far, it will be easy for the left back to go to your right back. So come to him, fix him, get close, and then release. So this is an, an example. With Gilbert, I say it once, it happened. And I saw him that the next situation that happened, he do it. The following situation that happened, he do it. With some players, they will never get it. I have to keep saying it nicely, the first one, second one, third time. And then I will get angry and say it in a difficult way. And the player, I can't believe on a player who doesn't understand what I want. So he find himself on the bench and usually maybe doesn't improve because it's the games who make you improve. So this quality for me is important. Is you, you focus and listen to what the coach wants from you. And the, the last uh, part is to be a team player, to have a good attitude, to, to not be a problem player. You know, to not, not also to be a shy player. The, uh, as a coach, I don't like shy player. Uh, I, I, I want a player who has some character, who can take decisions. And I, want, I like it when a player wants to, want to go to play a free kick. Or like how I told you about Sunit Chitri, even uh, at a young age, he took the decision to play the ball quickly. I like this play. But this is one thing. And being a problem player and being uh, uh, lazy, being, uh, um, you have to be generous on the field. So all this, uh, you know, players sometimes, they think that the coach is looking only how they dribble and they run with the ball. No. We watch everything. We watch his attitude. Is he always complaining? You know, sometimes you find players, he's a good player, but always complaining. Always about his teammates. His coaches doesn't like that. Uh, they like players who is responsible. They like players who help his teammates. Or you find a good player, he's the best in his team, and he thinks he should be called in the national team. But all what he do during the game is, is undermining his young teammates, insulting them, abusing them or something. So this is uh, the qualities of a national team player. Okay, brilliant. So after Mohan Bagan, you went and became became very successful uh, replacing Tim Hankinson as the head coach of Salgaonkar and quite notably you ended up winning the I league with that team what was the journey like with Salgaonkar over those two seasons well i will start with from mohan bagan by the way you remember i told you mohan bagan all the coaches before me was for 5 months when uh, mohan bagan i left because i i'm a i'm a coach who I have confidence in myself and I don't want to lose the relationships that I had with different managements. And I'm glad to say that I'm still good with most of the managements that I have worked with before. So when I feel that the club is about to, I'm losing and the club is not backing me anymore, I don't wait till it became ugly. I provoke. So with Mohan Bagan, I think there was election time during that time. And somehow, maybe, maybe, I'm just saying maybe having a foreign coach didn't suit the way how the atmosphere was that time. And uh, in fact, after me, I was replaced with an ex-player of Mohan Bagan. And I think that's maybe suited the environment. That That's not have nothing to do with the result or something because... Uh, after the first round in the I League, we was third of the league, third number three. And uh, in Calcutta League, we played six games and we won all of them, so we was top of the league. Uh, but I sense things wasn't going right because we we went to Mumbai, we won Mahindra, and we beat Air India two games on a row. We came back Calcutta, something happened, and we want to go out to play two games. We lost both of them, and in, in a very bad way. And uh, one of the top management was there and I met him at the airport. And usually I have a, I have a test question uh, to, to him, which I always do. I say, what do you think? Especially in crisis time, when you're losing many games or something. So I asked the question, uh, okay, 
team is not playing well, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I, I have a plan to, maybe I need the, to take the team out of Calcutta when we come back. And I see the reaction of the top official. Usually, if he still wants you, he will go with your plan. Uh, he, but he will also assure you that they still back you and all that. But on that meeting, when I said like this, and I said, what do you think? Then instead, because a, a, a management that wants you, still wants you, they will tell you, don't worry, just carry on with your work. We are with you. Yes, yes, take the team, do this. But the uh, answer of a question, what do you think, was, uh, was uh, to me, what do I think? So I didn't get that answer, and I felt, because... This was after I got to know a few things. And when I, I, I was sure that the, the support was not there and it's only a matter of time, I provoked my departure. Uh, I, when I was at the airport, wh what do I think? I said, well, uh, I think, uh, look, I worked for one year and a half with you guys and I, I cherish a good time. We had won some trophies and... And I, I also, maybe it's a good time to, to go for a new challenge and you also go for a different approach. And because the management sometimes, they, they don't want you, but they're afraid because you're popular maybe. They're afraid of the media, how they criticize them, if they sack you that time. So they wait, usually they will wait for you till you became weak with bad results. You, you understand what I mean? So, and I, that's how it happened. When we reached Calcutta, we had a meeting and we amicably uh, finished. And then I went to, to, to Salgokar. So we went on that, on that situation. And Salgokar was half of the season was second from bottom. And uh, I think they had, in 13 games, they had 10 points or something. Um, and I, I find a very average team. And also, uh, the foreigners who, who keep the team, who carry the team, uh, one, uh, th there was another problem, which, uh, which is very complicated. The agent who brought Tim, he had also brought one foreigner and one PIU. So when I reach, uh, the ex-coach was still there in Goa, and uh, I go to the training, but... In the afternoon, they, these guys, they meet the, co the ex coach, the agent, and the two players who are main players for me PIU from USA and the foreigner from Guinea, or I don't remember. So obviously, these guys wasn't with me. They wasn't happy to, to, with the change. They didn't want to focus with me. Plus, the team is average. And the other Nigerian striker, his name is Ekene, if you remember him. Uh, the, the, he doesn't have a good relationship with the other foreigner. And so the coach didn't play him because the other foreigner didn't like to play, to, to, to have him aside. Okay? So th that was a big problem. And, we, and sometimes uh, if a player will create a problem for you, it's better you do without him. I already discussed it before. Uh, First, the foreigner, uh, the, the coach left, and then the foreigner starts uh, saying he's injured when he trained, not 100%. And after he, he said he want to go back to play in USA. So I told the management, be it. They was worried. Oh, we will have one less. I said, what is better, one less foreigner or a problem player who is not playing but creating problems? So it's better. I prefer without it. He left. The PIO also left. So I, I cleaned, in a way, the team a bit. And I start, the, the other foreigner played hardly three games in the first round, the Nigerian, Ekene. So I start working on, on their... Uh, and guys, uh, especially, it happened to me many times, when you come in the middle of the season to a team... Because most coaches, when they come in the middle of the season, they replace a coach, they don't do well their homework. And usually, most of the coaches, the coaches are here, can hear me. 
many of them, they will say, oh, the team is not fit two sessions a day. So called so they can improve the fitness. Or the team is not well organized. Uh, and they will spend two hours, three hours on the field with boring tactical sessions, talking a lot. You should do this. You should not do this. The line, push up. Uh, when you go in the middle of a season to a team, what I advise is first, you take the team, is like a sick person, and you do for him a scanner. First, to know what is wrong. Actually, maybe the fitness and the tactics is not a problem. Or even if it's a problem, maybe the priority, maybe that, that sick person uh, have flu, okay? Have flu, and, uh, and this diabetic, but have cancer. So what are you going to treat first? You're going to focus on the diabetes or the flu? You need to fix the cancer first because that's, that's a, a deadly disease. So, and most of the time when you come to a new team, I find the problem is not fitness or tactic, it's more the team spirit, is more the relationships between players. And that's what I worked on. I, as I do most of the time, uh, I, I did start doing some enjoyable sessions. The team is already in trouble. Two, two team, two uh, uh, second from bottom, on the relegation zone. Um, so they needed the morale boosting, and uh, we start uh, we start doing fun sessions, working a lot on on technical sessions, doing tournaments, uh, and slowly the the group start building up. And yeah, we, we end up that season, uh, that second round. If you count only second round, we end up second best team after Dempo. We didn't only save relegation, but we end up sixth on the... In fact, on Bagan end up fifth, just one position above. And I joke with Mr. Debashish, I called him uh, the, after the last game of the league, because uh, if they lost and we win, we would be fifth and they would be sixth, my ex-club. So I called him because we we're still in touch. So I, I told him, ah, if, if I had one or two rounds more, I would, I would go above, above you. So that's how it happened. And Ekene, the player who didn't used to play and played only three games on the first, uh, on the first leg, ended up second top scorer with 17 uh, goals and signed for East Bengal. Uh, the following year is, is amazing. I, it was my best preseason. Uh, uh, I signed the players I wanted. We get Sweka, we get Yakubu, we get Ishfak. We get many players, strengthened many players. Uh, uh, of course, we kept Luciano. So we did a very good team. We get some good youngsters from the club. Uh, the preseason was fantastic because the uh, when we save relegation with the way we did it, the management and the chairman was very, very excited. Uh, the club grow a lot. Because remember that Salgokar, before I came, I think in the last six seasons before I came, they relegated twice, I think. And they didn't want anything and they was always far from the top. So they, he listened to me and all what I wanted, he, he did. The preseason, for example, we had about 12 days, I think. And we, uh, I used it because in preseason you have time, uh, and that's why I advise coaches uh, in preseason try to, because in preseason what we do normally is training a lot, uh, maybe some days, morning and afternoon, and you have a lot of time. Uh, so most of the time they only train and and, and eat and sleep, but I use that train session. I convince the players as well to educate the players. Because especially talking about Indian players, they need guidance, they need education. So I, I brought two different psychologists, uh, to two different ladies, to give them advice about how to deal with stress, how what kind of breathing exercises they should do in the dressing room, about their mental uh, preparation. I brought uh, Kaizad, who is very famous uh, dietitian. Uh, very muscle guy uh, who, 
who came from Mumbai. He talked to the players about the diet, about how to build their muscles and be strong uh, in terms of food. Uh, uh, in, uh, I remember one, one sentence he said. He said, uh, guys, uh, every, all the youngsters, because they are footballers, so they earn money, so they want to buy uh, branded clothes, Hugo Boss, uh, uh, they want to buy Armani. He said, uh, yeah, you all do that. But if you have a, a shit body, uh, you still will not look good with the, even Hugo Boss. But if you have a good fit body, you, uh, you wear any T-shirt, it will look good on you. And uh, also what I learned from him is, uh, and we have to understand that football is a difficult sport. Football doesn't make us fit. Football destroy our body. Why? Because it's a game with a lot of twist and turn, so much pressure on the knee, on the ankles, on the shoulders. You fall. Uh, you, you, when you jump high uh, on a duel, aerial duel on the ball, you may fall on your back. So he said, football can destroy this, but the fitness, the program fitness that you do is you help your body to support all the demand of the game. You know, when you build very well your, your tummy, uh, your abdominal and your back muscles, uh, even if you fall, your, your spine will not hurt because you have strong muscles who are keeping it. When you build the strong quads, and strong uh, 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 calf, uh, you, you're, you will not get uh, frequent injuries on the knee because the muscles are helping the knee to be stable. Uh, and uh, when you do a lot of uh, proprioceptivity exercises, you use your ankles and knees to get used to those twits, twists when you turn, when you dribble. So we did that. And it, it was good. The place was well educated, a very good group, very professional. And uh, that's the reason there is no success in, there is no secret in success. You work good, you get results. That season, we won the league, the cup, the double. We played a very good AFC Cup, beating uh, the, uh, Oman that year, had played India national team. Uh, Oman won 5-1. Two weeks later, we played Al Oroba, the champion of Oman, with seven players from the, that national team, with four foreigners, including uh, one Moroccan foreigner. The coach was, uh, the goalkeeper coach was from Morocco as well, and we beat them 3-1. And they came to me, uh, we was up 3-0, uh, and they scored plenty in Goa. And uh, the coach, who is Moroccan, came to me and shook my hand and said, my God, we wasn't expecting this. The players was really thinking that they would have it easy. Uh, we'd, uh, Uzbekistan champion had beaten Dempo in AFC Cup the season before nine, I think nine, they scored nine goals. We draw with them 2-2. So it was a good team. It was a fantastic time. It was great. I mean, that was your biggest achievement, you know, taking a average team to become champions. And yeah, just to remind you, uh, it was Kita Manju and Avnit Shergil. The two players you're talking about. Uh, so the second I last question. I didn't name them. Huh? <laughs> uh, so the second last question was: uh, You then returned to Mohan Bagan with the tag of being the highest paid coach in Indian football history. It was a colourful season because your team were deducted 12 points after the Abu Dhabi against East Bengal, and you had still managed to avoid relegation. What was the whole experience like in your second stint in Mohan Bagan, as well as having the nickname of Karim Chacha? Uh, Karim Chacha was in the first uh, in the first stint. Right. Uh, in fact, uh, I worked with Mohan Bagan the first stint, 19, uh, 18 months, one year and a half, and second stint, 19 months contract that I signed. And uh, and I should I didn't put it, but I taught Debashish Datta, one of the top officials of uh, Mohan Bagan. On one time, I told him, "Look, I." On my CV, I will put uh, the achievements when I put, you know, you put experience coaching and you put achievements. I will put I-League champion, Fed Cup winner, but I will put that I stayed 18 months plus 19 months in Mon Bagan because that's an achievement. You guys, you sack the coach after four months. 
five months. So second season was very difficult because uh, I just want to open a bracket here. Um, when I when I won the double with the Salgo car after the Federation Cup final against East Bengal in Calcutta in front of 70,000 fans of East Bengal. We was so lonely that day because there was only, everybody was with East Bengal except my team and me that we want for us. Uh, we beat East Bengal really a good game, 3-1. And uh, that's why coaches, you have to take sometimes tough decisions because I remember with Sueka, who is true professional, I don't know what happened before that final, but something about discipline. And uh, I had a meeting with Sueka and I told him, I will not start you for two reasons. You know, Sueka is one of my best players. So I would say that you will not start for two, two reasons. The first reason is because of what you did. I wasn't happy with and I really, you know me, you work with me in Singapore, you know, work with me in Mohan Bagan, uh, you work with me in, uh, in, uh, in Salgokar. Uh, uh, you know I don't tolerate such things, so this is to give a good example to the team. Of course, Sueka is a player who loses his cool sometimes, but when he comes back, he, he is a player who can recognize his mistake. In fact, he accepts it really, really fairly. And he said, I'm really sorry, coach, but whatever you do, I'm with you. If you. Even if you put me five minutes, I will give my 100%. The second reason I told him is the strategical reason. I said, we are playing against East Bengal in Salt Lake Stadium in front of 70,000 fans. Uh, they will surely be pushed by this crowd. Uh, and of course... The first half, at least, we have to focus on defending rather than matching them on the attack because they will be like, like bulls. They will be pushed, they will come at us, and we have to soak that pressure in the first half. But th so the strategy was first half, soak the pressure, and looking if we end up 0 0 or 1 1, excellent. And second half, we're going to go to win the, the Fed Cup. We're going to go to win the game because this is a final. So I said, we have the fitness and we have the, the you will be one of my main weapon second half because the center, ba the center backs and the defense of, and the midfield of uh, East Bengal, we know their names. We analyze them. I told him they would play uh, having 45 minutes fatigue in their legs you, with your pace and speed, you will enjoy the game. They will be spaced. And that's what happened. So I put him, I think the last 25 minutes or something, and he, he was fantastic. We, we won because of Sueka, second half. Um, so we, uh, uh, why I mention, uh, is, uh, so after this final, uh, I will take the opportunity to answer one of... Uh, Maybe your questions is the the federation come to 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 uh, Mr. Kushaldas contacted me to be the coach of the national team after the game because after the final of uh, Mohan Bagan uh, of uh, the final of the cup Salgokar is Bengal uh, just winning the league and then the cup uh, Karim and and not only that I think on that same evening there was the the awards uh, night in Calcutta, the PFA, FPA awards night. That means they will give the cups to the best coach, the best player. So winning the league, winning the Federation Cup, and winning the best coach of the, of the season. Uh, the best coach of the season with the speech, very nice speech from Churchill uh, Alimau in, the, in that awards night. Uh, towards me because he said I brought that guy to India uh, so uh, I think two days later Kushal Das called me about the national team the senior national team I was excited but I was also very happy at Salgoka because I had everything you know, anything I wanted it was available good working atmosphere good team I had a very good group 
So, but of course, I I wanted to to coach the national team, and I had an exit clause in my contract of one month notice. But I told Churchill, I told him, uh, I told the sorry, I told Kushal Das that uh, I'm I'm ready, I'm excited, but I have contract. If you can talk to the chairman of Salgokar, and uh, if they are okay, I'm ready to come. So I said, okay, but uh, Mr. Salgaukar refused categorically. In fact, there is uh, one headlines in newspaper at that time. If you, if you Google this headline, you're going to find it. Salgaukar and IFF are in tag of war over Ben Sharifa. Because there was some, com some discussions. So he refused. And uh, we, uh, uh, but what happened so the, the chairman convinced me also and tell me we have AFC Cup. This is also an international platform where you can do well and all that. So stay with us. I said, okay. But when we started the following season, um, uh, it, there was a change. It was uh, the, the pressure started because winning the double uh, for the management of Salgokar, they think that every time will be like that and they couldn't, Handle that we, I think our game, second game in uh, in uh, Lajong or Sikkim, I think, and I think we lost. And uh, and for the first time, I see uh, the the management was really annoyed with me, uh, and I couldn't accept it. You you understand my feeling, you know? I just want the, uh, you know, where the team was, where the club was. I just won the league, the cup. Uh, I just refuse a national team job, and now uh, we just started and the pressure. So maybe also I was I couldn't accept it, and we start having some issues. In the meantime, Mon Bagan also had a bad start, and that's how how uh, how the offer come, and that's how I used my exit clause to to go because. I, I never accepted the way uh, the, the pressure quickly changed and, and uh, the unhappiness was around. Uh, maybe I was blamed for some decisions about, uh, uh, but this is football. We have to understand that there's ups and downs. So that's how I, I want. I had to serve a one month notice before I moved to Mount Bagan. So my assistant, Midul Banerjee, was running the team. And uh, and then I, I joined the this the team was uh, the 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 team was uh, was very uh, I would say not as quality as the team that I had before. There was a lot of young players. Um, Odafa was there, of course. He was still the the little player, but uh, not as sharp as the years before. So there was a quite number of problems. In the meantime, East Bengal had a better team, a better settled team. Um, so when I came, imagine you have um, less quality team than before. Um, but for the fans and the, and the media, is Karim is coaching this team. He has to win everything. You, you understand the pressure. And not only uh, the other pressure I felt... Uh, my friends, uh, is also the tag, you know, that tag of being the highest paid coach was really heavy. Um, you know why, what I mean? Hello? Yes, absolutely. We can hear you. Yeah. So that tag, that tag of, uh, of being the highest paid coach in the history of Indian football, the, there are many coaches not all, but many coaches, especially the foreign coaches that was that time, uh, they was um, maybe not happy. I, I explain. Uh, like when I played the, some games in the press conference, when I play against these coaches, there's only one choice is to win. Because even if I draw, at the press conference, they will settle things. Like uh, they will say things like... Uh, in the dressing room, uh, I will be talking s same about my team, 
about the result and that's it. And if there is anything I would say about the opponent, I would say positive things. But they will say, what I read, what I saw, is that, oh, uh, let's say we draw the game, they will say, oh, uh, well, he's the highest paid coach. Uh, and some of them even talk more about my team than the opposition team. You know, there was comments, for example, on one game that, oh, Sweka, Sweka, nobody know him better than me. He played half of his career with me uh, in, in all the clubs I have coached in India. And even when he went to Dempo for a short time, uh, when he came back to me, he said, coach, uh, this experience show me how important to have a good coach. As a player, this is the first time I feel it. And, uh, and this coach was saying, uh, criticizing me and saying, oh, he's the highest paid coach. And uh, if I have that team, I would play Sueka on the flank because he's this or that. You know, so that pressure was, was tremendous from your colleague coaches, from the media, from the fans. So comes the derby. We, um, we faced the derby in a difficult time. We didn't have... Uh, East Bengal was better than us in all ways. And my two best players on that team in, of Mount Bagan was Nabi and uh, Odafa. Uh, first half, East Bengal better. Um, the referee lost the game. And uh, a lot of, uh, whenever there is 50-50, it's for East Bengal and my players start being really unsettled. Free kick, imaginary, they score from it the goal uh, around the uh, last uh, 15 minutes of, of the first half. And just a minute before the, the end of the first half, the crowd was angry with the referee. And a minute before uh, we go to the dressing room, uh, on the other side of the pitch, on the on the hottest side of the crowd, you know, East Bengal, Mohan Bagan, the, the crowd, the stadium was packed. And that side was Mohan Bagan fans. Uh, the referee, uh, I think the throw in or free kick was for us and he gave it to East Bengal. And then the crowd was was berserk, was, was really angry, start throwing things. Something hit Nabi on his uh, face, opened this side blood and all that, panic. Odafa came angry at the referee, got a red card. So you can imagine how the situation was out of control. I lost my two best players on the field. Uh, I have to manage the substitution. So it was, uh, I, I, we was all worried about what happened to Nabi because it was in the head, a lot of blood. So we, anyway, we managed. Uh, there was a lot of problems, a lot of commotions, and finally the referee, uh, the referee had uh, had whistled the the, the halftime, and at the halftime uh, the players was worried about Nabi uh, because we heard that he lost conscience. Uh, uh, everybody was angry. We lost the best players. Anyway, the management came and said we cannot play second half. There is a lot of things going on on the ground. Uh, on, the sta on the stadium, the fans, the police are are trying to contain the situation. So for security reason, we are not playing second half. For me as a coach, um, of course, the rule of the game we have to play. And, and of course, if we had to go back to the field, we would go back. But I know also deep inside me that um, I'm okay. As long as it wasn't, if, if I was asked, I would say we play. But the fact that the management uh, uh, decided that we don't play second half, uh, uh, the management decide this kind of things, and I was uh, we we had to accept it, uh, and then we didn't play the second half, and then uh, I think the next day comes that we was suspended from the league, and uh, and then that phase was also very difficult. Because we was in Calcutta, we was in uh, in Mohan Bagan ground training, and uh, the rumors start because we are suspended from the league. That's the first decision, suspended. So that means our season is over. So the players start asking, "What about us? Are we going to play?" And more than that, uh, I think other teams thought that this team will not play, so we can sign their players. <laughs> so you are after ten games. 
in the middle of the season, your players having calls to sign for other teams. How are you going to manage it as a coach? And then you go to training, everybody's talking only about this topic, the media. But I, when I talked to the management, I knew some solution will come out. And I said to the management, we cannot stay in Calcutta. Too much pressure. Players are distracted. Uh, we may be back in the league for, in any sort, so we have to be ready. So they say, what do you propose? I say, Durgapur. We go there for a camp. Find us a hotel. Give us a ground there, far away from this. And, uh, and you can manage your things with the federation. When there is a decision, we come back. They say, good idea. So I brought the team there. We start training really well. Uh, and that stoppage, I think, I don't know how many days, help us to get better fitness. And also, I start doing some media followed us even there. And uh, my, my plan was that I improve the fitness of the team. This is one priority. And second priority is uh, the players are under pressure. Uh, we need to do not only training. So there was a lake in Durgapur where there's those, uh, how you call those boats? where you cycle. So we brought, we used to do some fun for the, the group team spirit. And then in the media, they filmed that. And there is articles in Calcutta, the team is suspended and the, the coach is, uh, is having fun with the team, you know, criticizing me about what I'm doing. And then, so when we came, when they decide the federation after that, they, they stop the suspension, big fine to the team, and we have to come back to play the league with what? With zero points. After we had, uh, I think, 12 points, we end up zero points, and I think we have to catch up with, the, with 10 points or something because you have to go above the last and above the second last to save relegation. And uh, from that, that decision, every game was like a final. Tremendous pressure. Uh, we we used to play uh, uh, we used to play outside Calcutta in some ground, crowd full. Uh, when we draw, we are unhappy, and we are criticized by the fans, the abuse and all that. If we draw, because they know, everybody said it's impossible. Mohan Bagan is relegated, and then we work game after game. We stayed strong. There are three games, I think, three games that we won the game in the last minute or stoppage time. You can imagine. Uh, against Mumbai FC, we was 2-1, then 2-2. I think the 93 minutes, uh, we scored the winning goal and some other games like this. So it was, uh, it was uh, for me, uh, you know, I talked about winning the league, winning the cup, uh, difficult seasons. That was the most difficult time in terms of pressure, and uh, getting the result. And we managed to save relegation three games after the end of the season, uh, which is, for me, it's an achievement. Brilliant. That was a really good journey. Uh, you have had Pune FC as your last club in India so far. But before that, a uh, question that many of the audience would like to know. So, in, you have been in India for nine years. And you have come across a lot of household Indian coaching names. So, what we'll do is, I'll name the coach and you can just describe what their best quality was. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. So, we'll start with uh, Subhash Bhomik. Okay, uh, you want me to answer by one word or uh, elaborate? Like, uh, not elaborate, but as like in few words, you know, two or three words. Subhash Bombik, very colorful coach. Uh, but I think his strength as a coach was man management and how he prepared the players mentally. That was his strength. Brilliant. Uh, next we have Armando Colasso. Though, though, though I, would like him to, I would like him to excuse me and I apologize. Uh, I, I, I was one of the reasons he was sacked from, from East Bengal. <laughs> That, uh, Armando Colasso. That 5 3. Armando Colasso. Armando Colasso, uh, it's not an understatement. 
I think uh, he's the Guardiola of uh, Indian football because he managed to to put a style of play typical to Pun up to Dempo because Dempo was uh, was the passing team, you know, with climax, with all the Maish Gauli. Even Maish Gauli as a centre back, he could play as a playmaker with the skills that he had. So he managed to assemble a good team, uh, which for years playing really a very, very good brand of football based on possession, patience, uh, and uh, and uh, he's also good in managing the, the players. Brilliant. Uh, Bimal Ghosh. Bimal Ghosh was a, was a very, uh, I, I like Bimal Ghosh. Uh, we had a very good relationship, very close relationship. We used to talk football. I, I think he's really one of the underrated coaches that happened uh, in Indian football during my time. He was with Air India, very low budget, very average team. But I, in terms of tactics and strategies, I think he's uh, one of the best Indian coaches. Brilliant. Uh, Sukhvinder Singh. My friend Suki G. Uh, he is... Uh, Sukhvinder, what I used to like in him is uh, he's calm. Uh, he's he's calm. He he doesn't know the the pressure, and uh, also he was a a father figure uh, for for JCT. He was definitely the boss of that team. Brilliant. Uh, the last one, Subrata Bhattacharya. Controversial. <laughs> uh, I didn't know him in his playing career, but I was told he was very, he was a centre back, right? Am I right? Yes, centre back for India and Mohan And you know how is uh, he was the, and especially that time it's not like now, centre backs are more of a of a calm possession players, but centre back that time have to be very aggressive have to be very strong, uh, have to be at the limit nasty. And I think that uh, that position uh, as a player uh, had affected him and he carried on the same thing as a coach. But uh, for what he has done for Mohan Bagan, you have to be respected as well. Great. So bef before we, I ask you the last question, I just want to tell you what, what the plan is. So after this, there's going to be a rapid fire round. There's going to be a pick one out of two and also the questions from the audience. So we still have some no more time. So, you know, because it's no, no very problem. important to just ask you the question that the audience have put up. Of course. Okay? So the last okay. question that's here is your last job with Pune FC, where you took over a young squad and you finished runners-up in an international tournament and even beat Ashley Westwood's Bengaluru FC at their home ground. What was your season like with PFC? PFC was a bit similar to, to Salgoka in terms of... Uh, I was very, very... I think in terms of uh, management, um, the, the chairman, um, Sir Piramar, uh, was not uh, very present. Uh, he's, a, he's a young chairman who loved the game and, and know the game. And, and you know, he's a chairman who is a fan of Liverpool, who had traveled to watch games. So he's passionate. Because you know, sometimes you work with the non-passionate uh, chairmen as well. Uh, his passion was, though different, was similar to the passion of Churchill for football. Uh, Churchill will go watch youths, will go watch, uh, despite his busy schedule, he will go watch youngsters, he will, he will watch uh, Goa League, he will watch, uh, even he will watch other teams playing. Uh, so Piramar was another level as well of passionate uh, chairman. But uh, I think the key figure that uh, I really, really, really enjoyed working with was Mr. Chirag Tanna. Chirag Tanna was the general manager of the club. 
a uh, superb guy, superb guy, understand the game. Uh, he would, he's a guy who, though there wasn't a lot of pressure in Pune, but uh, in, in, uh, pressure in football is always there. But he was, he's a guy who will shield anything uh, negative from the coach and the team. And uh, he was top on what he's doing. Uh, if you describe me as uh, one of the best coaches because I won trophies, I would describe Chira Chirag Tanna as one of the star management uh, because he knows his job properly. Uh, Pune also, uh, maybe in terms of my contract, was not as good as where I was with Mohan Bagan, but uh, I was well taken care of. And also the team was well taken care of. We, we stay in uh, the best hotels, like in, I th in, uh, in Pune, I think it was the only team in Eirik that stay in hotels like Marriott hotels and all that. So the conditions of work was good, the infrastructure was good. There was an academy. Uh, so I was, and, and also as much as I'm now, as a coach, I'm better than when I was in India, definitely because of the experience that I had after I left to uh, Warriors in Singapore or to the national teams in Morocco, uh, having played international games all over Africa. So definitely, I am better coach than when I was in India. And when I was in Pune, I was better coach than when I was in Mohan Bagan or Salgokar or Chichen, because I accumulate experiences. And, and uh, unfortunately, this didn't uh, work out. Did, I mean, did, I didn't stay. Uh, I would say why. And uh, but the time, the preseason, the, we managed to make a good team, and again, a very exciting team, very young team. How Kip was young, uh, Nikhil Kadam was young. Uh, I had Sueka, uh, Arata, uh, Luciano. Uh, all these players was like the senior players of that team. I think I had also Ishfaq Ahmad. Uh, if you notice, uh, I think a coach, when, when players start following him, that means he's doing something right. Because if you notice in, in all these clubs, the, the same names almost repeat themselves and follow me where I go. Um, that uh, we, we put in place really nice, uh, nice uh, style of play. And my, my style, my, if you watch Puna, that's me. It was a team because I like defensively. I like my teams to be, of course, fit, uh, to be able to do pressure all over the field. I mean, the players who worked with me will know that I, I don't uh, discuss this, is that I want, uh, I want the team to have, the, the guy who have the ball, would never have the time to think or pass or there is always and it's not only one like for example in half of the field half line if the midfield of the opposition have the ball my midfield will put pressure from front facing him but the striker also if he's close by he would pressure put pressure from behind and the the guy who have the ball he in front of him there is an opponent and behind him, there is an opponent as well. He joined in. Uh, I, I, I have a special word for it here in Morocco. Is that we, how you call when you, when, for example, you're in the street and uh, you're a tree and you find uh, a friend who did something, a mistake with one of them, and the three of them, they, they want to beat him. The three of them. How do you call that? They gang up on him? Right? Is, it, is that right? Right. Right. So, so that's how I see the defending that I want. It's not uh, your area or you. It's, it's whoever close to the ball, uh, the one that have the duty, for example, the ball is on the left flank, my right back have the duty to, to press on the ball. But if the right half or the center half or anyone who's close by can join in and win that ball and that player will not come out, that's what we do it. And I, I do it, for example, with the, uh, I had a discussion with Sonny Norby, uh, who I didn't coach, but I'm still in touch with him now. And we talk sometimes. I follow his career. Sonny Norby, you know, 
He play on the left, he cut on his right foot, and he's able to shoot and score. So I do a special plan for Sonny Nordi. So I say, uh, don't worry about his, uh, basically to close his right foot. Even if he go on the left, it's not dangerous. He will go on the flank, he can cross, and he doesn't have a good left foot to cross a good cross. But the right foot, you close the right foot, and not only, I, I, I tell them always, I want not only one on Sunni Nordi, but two to three players. And that's special plan when I play against Sonny Nordi. And he told me, he told me, coach, you give me hard time. I know you. I would never be against one, one v one. You always, any situation I'm in, I find two to three players. So the, the best thing I can get is a free kick. Other than that, they will take the ball from me. So, so in Pune, I managed to put this philosophy. Second, I want as much as possible high pressure. And when we win the ball, uh, I'm like, um, uh, I prepare the team for quick counter, press, win the ball, go, go to the goal. If uh, the guy who win the ball find the pass to the striker, give it. If he can one-on-one -on -one dribble and shoot, do it. But don't play possession. Press, win the ball, go. Because that time, the opposition didn't close. There is spaces. They have the ball, so they open up. So when we win the ball, use the spaces quickly. Go to score. And if, for example, the player passed to the striker, the striker was closed down, he was obliged to give a back pass, and by that time, by those five, six seconds, the other team came back, I also prepared my team to be able to play possession. You know, to build patiently and to... But these are the three principles of my game aggressivity and hustle uh, and pressure when we defend and together as a team and when we win the ball quick counter if we cannot we keep the ball that's how and with Puna is the team that I managed to implement that to the best uh, that's why if I stayed with Puna another season I assure you we would be uh, I league winner or Fed Cup because we want we did a good preseason. We went to uh, King's Cup in Bhutan. Uh, we played. Uh, it's an international tournament. Good, good level. Mohan Bagan was there. Uh, uh, the best team of uh, Bangladesh was there. Of that rich guy Abahani, I think, or something. Very good team with top foreigners. Thai team was there from Thailand. Good team. And we played that tournament semi-final. We was with Mohan Bagan. We beat them, and we played the final. We was the, uh, the crowd was all with us. If you go back to internet and you see what the social media was saying, the fans there about that Pune team, they just love it. We, within the games that we played, we created really good fans. And we, di we did this uh, style or this uh, uh, way of play to the best in terms of aggressivity, pressure, uh, and also the way we play we scored many goals, uh, quick goals. We, we kept position when it needed. Uh, so we, we did well and we come back when we started the league. It was, we was the most, I, I'm sure, we was the most attractive team. Beating uh, Shillong, good team, with the, that uh, ex-World Cupper from Trinidad and Tobago. Cornell, Cornell was with them. Uh, we beat them 5-5-2. Five, five, uh, we won many games at home. It was good. Our home ground record was good. And uh, away games, uh, we went to Bangalore FC. You know, the big Bangalore FC that played even in ISL after with the same squad. Uh, we, we, we beat them 3-1 uh, three, three on that in, in Bangalore. Uh, and also in preseason, we played against some ISL team. We played against Pune FC. We went to Delhi we did a camp there and we played against uh, against uh, Dynamo, Delhi Dynamos and we couldn't finish the game. Uh, I, I can send you the highlights. It's because there was uh, eight foreigners on the ground. They had a Dutch coach and they didn't accept. They were so arrogant. 
they didn't accept that this I League team with this young team is giving us hard time. You know, with that pressure, with the we we create the the first chances. The score was two zero for them, but we was in the game and we was we was going to score, and then there was a fight, and then the coach asked the team, no, no, we don't continue. But I think the coach knew that he would lose that game, and it's not good for him that a young I League team is is winning so many foreigners uh, uh, team. It wasn't good for him. Uh, I still have the highlight and I'm very proud of that game because we, that was a very good team but needed another year or two to, to start giving the best results. And I think if they stayed, if we stayed together, uh, we would do well in, in I-League and we would do well in AFC. That was a wonderful nine years of your journey in India. My yeah. colleague Sid is going to take over for the rapid fire. The pick one very quickly, and after that, it's going to be the only the audience questions. Yeah, just that tell okay? him that yes, just tell him that the pick one. Usually, I don't like those questions. It's like choosing between water and oxygen. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, Sid, are you on the line? Yeah, I'm on the line, Ryan. Hi, Karim sir. How are you? Hi. How are you doing? All good, all good. I've been listening to you talk about uh, your experiences in India and it's like a full thesis on how to give a perfect coach education, man management, media. Well, that's education. why I'm here. I, as I said at the beginning, I, I really want uh, Indian coaches to come up yeah. and I'm, uh, really those experiences that I'm saying are very important. I think I shared many things, whether when it comes to uh, player management or management of the management. Right. You know, even the chairman, you have to manage him. When you work with someone like Churcher, you really need to be good at man management okay. to manage that. And I, I just want the coaches to, to, uh, to, to have the best. I hope that they are uh, having a good time. All right. Uh, I'll just go through the rapid fire questions and you can answer them and they, a little uh, insight on why do you think that uh, you made that choice. So the first question is, who is the best Indian player that you have seen? It could be from your team. It could be from some other team. So, sir, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. Okay. It's a tough question because yeah. I, I, I loved all my players <laughs> that I have coached. You know, I, okay. I still, but um, there was many, there was many players. Unfortunately, you see, I, I talk about it uh, at the beginning. Uh, that's why we have to ask and see. I know why a player like Baichun Butia have uh, stayed on top form all his career on, on top. And even now, you watch him on some videos in this uh, confinement, he's still training at home. Uh, you watch uh, Sunil Chetri uh, and you ask yourself how, you know, people see Sunil Chetri, for example, as a short player. He's super, super, super strong. Right. You just see when, it's like uh, even at the highest level, Ronaldo. Ronaldo, uh, when you when you Ronaldo played with the Benatia in Juventus, right. I think you know Benatia. He's yeah, a Moroccan yeah. centre back. Right. He was recently our captain of the national team, right. and and uh, and he said it on TV. But once he told us, we was chatting with him uh, at the hotel, and he said uh, he never seen a player like Ronaldo with his work rate. And he said one story that they played an away game uh, evening in uh, 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 um, Serie A, and they are coming by bus to uh, coming back home to uh, in the bus. Right. Uh, Benatia, he said he's in the second or third row, and Ronaldo is in the last uh, row. Right. And then he said, I receive a message on my phone. Uh, they are in the same bus, but Ronaldo is sending a message to Benatia. Hey, what what are you doing when we reach? Uh, Benatia say, I'm I'm going home to sleep. He said, Would you mind joining me on the gym? Okay. You know, evening coming back from yeah. the. So these are the and and the answering question is difficult because there's so many good players that I have coached, right. but they didn't had long career, or they maybe had long career but they didn't stay at top for a long time. Right. You know, look at Tomba, for example, comes to my mind. Tomba. Tomba was national team player and reached 
top and then boom down yeah. and then again when i when i was at salgokar he came in his 30s at salgokar yeah. everybody said he's finished yeah. but maybe with my uh, you know my style of work and pushing the players to be fit he again come on top and was key of our success for the double for winning the league and the cup right and and but again after two season come down again so it's very easy to go top it's very difficult to go top but it's even harder to stay on top and for that the only the two indians the three indians that players that comes to my mind bai chung sunil chetri mahesh gaudi uh, i feel these three assemble so many ingredients of a top professional player and i really find it difficult to choose between the three of them because they are they came in a different timing as well uh, of course uh, maybe the a little advantage for sunil chetri because he's still right. there and he's still breaking records and still uh, performing at the highest level okay uh, the second question is uh, which is the best indian player that you have coached i just answered that no uh, you answered the be- best indian player that you have best. seen play yeah so somebody in your own team best indian player that you have coached yes. at bagan or at salgaonkar or at pune for that matter well i just mentioned i think it's fair i mentioned three players for you right yeah mahesh gauli bai chung and sunit chetri yeah. and the only one i coach in those three is bai chung so okay let's keep it that way <laughs> okay great um who is the best foreign player that you have coached in india so many good ones okay uh difficult to choose odafa definitely is a player that right as i told you he odafa can make you win a game by himself he will keep quiet for mm-hmm. 90 minutes and he will score in the 91 two goals okay in the injury time he's capable of scoring two goals um but so many odafa bareto sueca luciano definitely these uh, these four are there okay but i would add even yakubu chidi all fantastic players and helped me a lot i mean the uh, the thing is i uh, including odafa i i had always uh, managed to have a very very good relationship with them uh, by the way uh, i talked to yakubu not long ago i talked to chidi maybe a year ago uh, i talked to to odafa and even his w- wife sometimes uh, ask how how am i so i have a very very good uh, relation with them and they are all top quality players right um okay uh, the next question is which club was the one that you enjoyed coaching the most in the country in india when it comes to passion pressure um you know sometimes as coaches i tell you sometimes i we 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 complain about the pressure right we yeah. coaches we say yeah. yeah oh calcutta for example my god i cannot work there too much pressure but that's what uh, you know i compare it to you know those people who do those dangerous sports right very Any dangerous sport. that yeah, means yeah. one mistake is that <laughs> Uh, give me some sports like that uh, like f1 or for those who like... now this new this new sport is that uh, they jump from building to building and they make that's called parkour you, you know that's called parkour 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 p a r k o u r so one mistake he will he's got yeah. done right right or like those guys who who jump from a big height uh, or and then last minute they they fly or i don't uh it's difficult bad you may die but you love it <laughs> you still love it that's so the clubs mohan bagan is is way on top because of that zeal right. of that pressure uh one game i played against pune i i i was told the media some media told me that the the management made a meeting and said your next game against pune if you lose would be your last one and uh, one top official who was very close to me mm. and in the meeting was uh, basically tumpai 
boss and Debashish boss was, was always supporting me. But in the meeting, there is not only them, there is other people. Right. That's the difficulty in Calcutta as well. So most of them want me out. But these guys were, was kind of defending me. And Tumpai had called me and said, I couldn't do anything more. Now, the only way out of this, win the next game. And uh, uh, you, 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 that's why I'm explaining why I choose right. uh, one there is Mohan Bagan. Is you are training the team knowing that you still have maybe five days and you're going to leave the club. And basically leave the club means uh, you lost the job, you have no more income, and all the pressure that comes with it. When I'm going to find the next one? So you understand how much in your mind. Right, right. And yet, so inside you're boiling. Mm -hmm. And you are angry also that this club, I gave them so much, and now because of one loss or something, they are putting pressure on me. You're angry. Mm -hmm. So you're angry, you're disappointed, you are, um, you are scared from the future. And yet, you cannot show one glimpse of all this to your players. Because if you do that, if you go training session down, not preparing, because who will save you? They no. are the players who are going to save you. Right. And you're training how you're going to prepare to that game. And you come with all this pressure. You don't show anything. You do good training session. And one day before the game, the opposition coach, Mike Snowy, mm. uh, the guy that I replaced in Pune after, right. the, he used to hate me, he said in the <laughs> press conference, uh, uh, if it was my, I wouldn't, I would not invite him in my birthday. They ask him a question. What do you think of Kareem? Yeah. Coach, he said, oh, he's, a, he's okay, coach. I, anyway, in my birthday, I wouldn't invite him in my birthday. And they call me the media. So you are in those mixed feelings. Right. The next day is the game. And they call you, they tell you, hey, coach, you want to reply anything? The coach said, this is what he said about you. And I say, I will call you back. But I'm mm. thinking. <laughs> I want to answer. Right. But I said to myself, hey, guy, he said, I said, you have already a war with your club. They will sack you tomorrow. So you, ha you don't have a lot of weapons. Don't waste them in, in that mm. war with the coach. Right. Leave him till tomorrow. Win the game. And, and that game, because I want to win that coach, and I win, win to save my job. I want, so, so that feeling, you, you, you cannot imagine it. Uh, in uh, and and we won three one that game and the crowd was all with me, so so definitely uh, Mohan Bagan and Churchill because of the pressure okay. and the the because in Churchill also uh, because of Mr Churchill Alima he want to win every game, so you have to deal with that uh, and in terms of enjoying the work having all the ingredients because in Mohan Bagan and Churchill, sometimes you have to do the best biryani, but you have only rice. <laughs> you don't have any meat or any chicken. And they tell you, no, I want to be, I want to have the best biryani. Okay. In Salgokar and Puna, there was nice, they, you, you want to do biryani, they will tell you, what do you need? And you tell them, I want meat, I want right. rice, basmati rice, I want this. And of course, when they give you this, you can do a good dish. Right. Okay. <laughs> That's a really detailed answer and a really good one. I would come to you, talked about biryani. I would like to ask you which is your favorite Indian dish? Because we've been talking about football for a long time and you just I, I the, the dish that I like is a little bit sweetish. Yeah. Is a, a mutton korma. Okay. But, but I, some places it's a bit sweetish, but some places have not sweetish taste. So I like the when it's a little bit sweet. Right. Okay. So the the korma, but of course the the I think the national dish for the foreigners is the biryani. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, Karim, sir, you can add, add to that. Yeah. Add add to that cheese garlic naan. Cheese garlic naan also. Okay. <laughs> now you you make me you make me start feeling I like, like I I, I wish to have one now. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I thought that you will be craving the Indian food if you are talking about it. I think yeah. we all are, we are all at lo in, in lockdown at home, so we are not having the same food that we could if we could go out and everything. Okay, yeah. so I'll, I'll ask you uh, pick one, but you don't have to pick one. You can say both, and you can say why. So, 
so uh, i wouldn't put you in a corner and say this or this you can choose both and you can tell us why okay baiching or chetri or both both because because there was the best uh, the, the problem is uh, to choose one of them right. if they wasn't the same time you okay could, right so they play that. a little on the same time but bai chung was first dominate indian football sometime right. and then sunit chetri take over and he still dominate in indian both both okay uh, udafa or berito different style udafa was uh, Uh, Odafa would uh, would dribble four or five, would dribble the whole team and score. Right. Uh, and nobody can score as much as him. Both feet, powerful, shoot with both feet. Maybe if I met him at his very young age, I would improve his head in capability, and he would be a complete striker. Uh, uh, Barreto is is on on creative, nice style of football. he can maybe score less but make the team score many goals okay um so okay goa or calcutta in terms of where you <laughs> i know it's a tough one if you wanna, if you wanna, if you wanna enjoy, i think i answer by answering yeah, you did. you did. if you wanna, if you wanna go to enjoy uh, a good nature and uh, lay back uh, uh, working atmosphere where you finish and then you take your kids to the beach and right. have nice fish and all that definitely goa is an amazing place to live mm. uh calcutta is, is another another level uh because of the love that uh, the normal fans give you every day everywhere okay um chidi or yakubu different it's a bit like odaf and uh, right. bareto Uh, Yakubu is more like Bareto and Chidi is more like Odafa. Uh on his day he can be deadly. Chidi is a bit uh, maybe not as consistent. Sometimes uh, he need a certain team around him to perform to the best. Mm. Uh Yakubu is is a, is a, is a intelligent player. I would right. remember when we took because that season with Salgaukar you have to remember that we took away the league from the hands of East Bengal yeah, yeah. thanks to Yakubu uh, we was losing 2 2-0 in Goa uh, Tolga scored two goals and if we lost that game East Bengal definitely champion but second half we come back uh, I did two substitution at half time the whole right back right side I changed it just pal out Anthony out and I put fresh ones because mm. that's where Tolga was doing damage uh, and then we we win the second half by 3-2 yeah. and uh, that's allow us to win the league and plus again on the final for the cup uh yakubu is very intelligent player very very intelligent and okay. and i wish i would have coached him in his uh, younger age because he was at the end of his career but despite that he was magical okay um so in terms of coaching, don't forget don't yeah. forget that If you ask a Mohan Bagan fan, definitely they will choose Chidi because in the revenge of 75, he scored four goals in our win against right. East Bengal with five goals. Right. Uh, okay. In terms of coaches, uh, Karim sir, Bob Hutton or uh, Wim Kovamas? Who would you choose? Or both? Um, to be honest, uh, B- Bob, uh, Bob brought something to Indian football. I think what he brought is he make the team believe on themselves. Uh, maybe he have a slightly uh, older style of uh, play. Mm. Uh, maybe his football was not attractive, but he managed to make a winning team that uh, fight with the best. And uh, uh, Kim Pim uh, Vim Kovermans. uh was more as a coach educator uh okay. he have a certain style I, he was my instructor in pro license as well okay so i know him very well he is a typical uh, dutch philosophy of football which uh, maybe at times it couldn't be adjusted for the for indian football that time okay 
um we'll go to the audience questions kareem sir because there are a lot of them here and they have been coming and they have been pouring and there's a question that just came in as we are speaking uh, there's a question from zigmeth he says what do you think about hero isl in india and what do you think does it improve the football condition in india and how i just um... excuse me one second no problem sir no problem I'll just put the question about isl yes sir well isl i think uh, it it uh, it definitely helped to put uh, indian football in the world map uh, let's not forget that uh, with the only the i league it was very difficult to to market the league uh, but with the power of the finances of isl by signing uh, some uh, names and maybe they didn't give much in terms of football uh, but in terms of image of indian football and in terms of a publicity of indian football uh, all over the world yeah. uh, they did the, they did help on that and that's also very important it was difficult at the beginning uh, because the calendar it was like uh, the season is divided by half and the uh, the many players many indian players could not uh, find uh, a place and they have to play in the i league and wait for five months six months to play again and that's right. impossible for development but i think with the way they are going now is having one league uh, basically both leagues going well and for a long uh, period of time this is the right way and the way forward okay. um uh, and i think that uh, uh, now we can hope for for more indian players coming up by this new format right uh, so there's a question related to the same that you said uh, do you think more teams should be introduced in the isl the or i league teams in the i league sorry again uh, do you think more teams should be introduced in the isl or the i league what's your opinion on that uh yeah i i mean uh, look uh, uh, i feel if they can put more teams and they have it's not easy to just put more teams i mean teams who will add value right if a team comes with a strong financial financial uh, backup and they're going to build a good team and they're going to do uh, good uh, youth developments why not it will add value and and why not even create in a, a third division uh, league right uh, because india is a big country and uh, and you just have to but the problem is uh, is the having the uh, the big companies have to play a good role in the developments of indian football right okay um okay so there's a question it says that uh, you mentioned about ronaldo talking to benashia that will you come to the gym with me after the match Uh, how important do you think it is to uh, strain your body or to reach your limits uh, in order to make it to top football should you be doing it or should you take it step by step well, anything it comes step by step now there is uh, there is a lot of uh, uh, even in terms of fine, uh, of fitness before we used to say for example long time ago we uh, you don't go go inside the gym until you became 20 or something right but now there is a lot of programs of fitness for players as young as 13 14 but scientifically based and uh, uh, but hey you just uh, my friend who asked this question you just can go to youtube and watch uh, football of the 80s and 70s and 90s and look have a look at the players and have a look at the pace of the game and watch uh, football of now now they are the the things that improved of course uh, there was some talented technical players before like right. zico like uh, uh, cruyff like uh, many players beckenbauer right. but uh, now uh, i think they became better technically but most importantly uh, players now became like beasts you know you just have to look at ronaldo and other players 
the six packs and the, the amount of muscle they are putting on the high yeah. higher body and and of course that's head because football is a contact game is a is a, is a physical game definitely right, right. and uh, there's a question that you talked about the physical uh, limits of the game or the physical level that you have to be at there's a question which says uh, there are different opinions about weight lifting age some say we can start by the age of 12 some say after 16 what do you think according to you is the right age to start weight lifting for uh, players there is something important i will answer this question uh, right. very important uh, klopp the coach of liverpool they yeah. asked him what is the secret of uh, of your success he said i am a coach who who cannot be the best in everything you know i'm yeah. i am maybe good in strategizing maybe good in tactic but anything that is weak in me in my specialty and the team need mm. i will get the best for example i'm not good in diet i don't know what i know something about what the players need to eat and not to eat right. but i'm not the best so i'll get the best dietitian i would get somebody who really master that thing right so that means his stuff is master he have a master one of the best in diet one of the best in uh, uh, best in terms of physiotherapy he will have the best in terms of fitness uh, and and it's important as a coach to know your limits uh i seen some coaches during my career who if you ask him any in not if in fact without asking i had seen some coaches and i heard some coaches uh getting uh, giving advice to the doctor <laughs> how to treat uh, right. a player right. uh, i think it's wrong i think you have to be humble sometimes to say i really don't know exactly especially so the question about when weight lifting i i can't give you a good answer because number right. one i'm not expert on that and number two things especially these things keep changing you know during the years uh one day they will tell you no 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 if you do weight lifting before the player uh, reach the the maturity uh, he will be short that's right. what we heard before right uh Uh, they used to say a lot of things in terms of this uh, of the fitness before they used to say uh, oh no 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 you you cannot do speed you have to do endurance first you have to bring them to the forest or the beach and run for 2 hours mm. but now uh, because the the game of football is you have uh, basically how many the player on the field sometimes he he's standing not yeah. moving Right. Sometimes he walk, sometimes he jog, sometimes he jog a little bit faster, and sometimes he is in full sprint, full sprint. Right. But those moments of full sprint and full speed, they may be five or seven percent of the whole ninety minutes, if you do a statistics about it. Right. And before, we used to focus in fitness about the ninety-five percent. that means we run a lot and we do a lot of and but after they say no 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 we have to focus on the 5% is the is the fastest we can run and how many how many how many strong uh, fast distances we can do and do it frequently mm. so same thing i i really cannot answer objective answer from me uh, about that okay uh i'll just put ryan on on the line he has a few questions that he has received privately ryan are you here yeah i am okay so perfect i'll just read them out yeah just a second please uh okay so avijit mishra's question is do you think more team should be introduced in the i league i answered that hey, sir answer the question I, I yeah, 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 yeah. I'm just not sure about that. Okay, Kamlesh asks if your top player tries to be friendly with you, and at one at a point of time also becomes close to you and takes you for granted and tries to dominate you. What would you do? Well, he. I think he answered. The answer is in the question. Uh, basically, who controlled this? Is the coach? Is you? 
you, you should with ex and that's you get it with experience by dealing with many players many uh, i i like to be to be close to the players but not too close and i that's why many players that i had coached uh, they know there is karim the coach and karim the man uh, karim the coach is very disciplined very strict can shout sometimes when it needed can say one or two bad words when it's needed uh, to put things into place. Uh, but uh, uh, after, during normal time, I like to be close to the players because this is a very tricky balance. Because for me, the best coach is, is uh, when he managed to get the player play for himself. Player usually play for himself, for the club, for his family. But many times when the player uh, the coach, if he managed to make the player play for him as well, which means uh, I remember, uh, okay, Mohan Bagan first starting of uh, uh, of uh, uh, a player from Delhi, uh, Manish Matani, if you remember this player, Manish Matani. Manish Matani, his first game was against Kerala when we was up 3-0, I put him last 20 minutes or so. And his first starter was against East Bengal in the derby. Uh, if we had lost that game, I would be criticized by putting a young player. But Manish Matani not only played well, but scored one of the five goals. And, uh, and you go back to YouTube and go back to that game of 5-3 win against East Bengal and just watch after Manish Matani make the shot and score, uh, he run, but the players surround him and hug him. But he's trying to get away from them. And look at his eyes. Uh, his eyes is fixing the coach. He want to go back. He doesn't want to celebrate with the player. He's pushing and trying to get his way out to come and, and hug me. And, and that's a great feeling. Uh, so it's this balance that you have to find that the player love you, like you, but also respect you. And that's up to you. You would not go to have a drink with him. You would not go frequently to have every time coffee with him. Sometimes, yeah, if necessary, to help him to overcome something, yeah, no problem. Having a meal with him sometimes, no problem. But not to the extent of being close friends and, and talking about subjects that uh, interest you. And uh, uh, I don't think so. Okay, uh, we'll take the last two questions. So there's a question from a girl footballer, a state level girl footballer, Pooja, who wants to know your perspective as a player, because she's a player. She asks that when you have gone to different clubs as a player, the coach's style of play has been different at different clubs. So how do you adjust with the style of play as a player? I think I answered this question uh, a bit uh, when I was talking about the quality of a player to know and to, to catch what the coach expects from them. And to, first of all, I, I would like to thank uh, Puja for, for this uh, question. I didn't know there is uh, a girls with us here. Uh, so thanks for being here. And uh, secondly is... Uh, of course, good coaches, they will give you the confidence needed and they will surround you with a good confidence. But, but you as a player have also to be, uh, like never say to a coach, uh, I, play, I, on, I play only number 10, I only attack. Uh, or he will not like it. Or when a coach asks you, uh, Puja, you play uh, in the midfield, uh, but now I need you, I, 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 my first right back, uh, my 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 uh, my first right back was uh, uh, is uh, suspended. And my second right back is uh, injured, and I see you have the quality to help me in this game as a right back. And you panic, and you get out as soon as you have to be ready to get out of your comfort zone, and and just follow the coach. A good coach will all, always want good things for you, and he know your quality and. Uh, and you have to adjust with every coach. One coach will tell you, for example, if you are right back, one coach will tell you, I don't want you to step above the half line. Do only the defensive job. 
And another coach will, will encourage you to go and overlap and give crosses and join the attack. Uh, you have to adjust. You can't tell him, no, no, I know only this. And, and uh, being, uh, po this we call it, I think, polyvalence, uh, is uh, being able to do many, many things. Players, uh, coaches like, we call it utility player. So be adjustable and be ready for changes, be ready to do different things. Because that's what will happen. Great, great, great piece of advice. So we'll go for the last question of the day. It is again asking you about a coach. The question is from Kamlesh. He's asking about your thoughts on Derek Pereira and why no one could tame Rauf Khan. Sorry again? So there's a question from Kamlesh. He's asking, what are your thoughts on Derek Pereira? And also, why could nobody manage Rauf Khan? Uh, who is uh, Rauf Khan? So he may not have been at your time. He was a he was a left back, left wing. Okay. So his question, his other question is that what did you think Explain of? Explain to me. Uh, no, I'm interested to know Rauf Khan. Rauf uh, Khan, uh, Churchill brother. So he was in. Was he was was he a bit how we discussed about Odafa? Uh yes, 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 yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay, but but depend on the coaches. I I think. Uh, Sometimes, look, the player is not always right, and the coach is not always right. right. You know, sometimes the if if a player has problems with all the coaches, cannot be all the coaches are wrong, uh, and otherwise. But if he's talented, uh, I wish I have coached Rauf Khan <laughs> right. to test my my management abilities. And your thoughts? His last question was your thoughts on Derek Pereira. I used to have a very, he's one of the coaches that I used to share with him. A lot of good, uh, good, good relationship. We used even to meet sometimes for a drink and all that. Uh, I respect him a lot. I, I like him as a, as a person and as a coach. Though uh, my records against uh, Derek uh, was, was high, high, high uh, for me means uh, most of the games where we met i have won that uh, that game um, and it's it's true whether with churchill or whether with mon bagan or with salgokar uh, it was uh, i had a good record uh, good winning record against uh, against uh, derek uh, but um, putting that aside i always uh, respected the way he was fair play and we 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 always uh, we always had share a good relationship. Even recently, we had talked uh, on the phone. Brilliant. Uh, now, we are about to have a complete three hours with Mr. Kareem Ben-Sharifa. From my side, it was wonderful to have you. Great insights. So, before you give your final words, a uh, young academy player, Tasmay Patil, would just like to say a thank you to you and then you can give your final words. Tasmay, are you on the line? <coughs> Uh, Sid, you may have to put him unmute, Tasmay. Rajkumar says, very informative session, wonderful insights from Mr. Kareem. So there are a few reviews. Just a second, he's just... Uh, yes, sir. Just... I'm here, sir. Uh, your video will need to be on, if possible. One minute, sir. Sorry. Yes, sir. It was a wonderful, it was very wonderful having Mr. Kareem Bencharefa parting with, uh, with us for a long time and spending the evening with us. Thank you very much, Mr. Ben Sharifa, for agreeing to interact with the Indian players and coaches through this online platform. And we hope you make your return to football very soon. Thank you, sir. Kareem, sir, any words? Any last uh, words? Well, uh, uh, just answering the young uh, Kamlesh, right? Uh, no, uh, Tasme. Tasme, because he end up. Uh, hope you return to football. I'm, I'm. I never left football. I'm always in football. What he mean? I think return to India. Indian football, yes. <laughs> Indian football. So let's let's hope for the best. I would be glad to to have another experience there because, honestly speaking, I share. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shit. <laughs>
Is anyone so, here? You can go on. I think, Sid, can you just mute him? Yes, Karim, sir. Please go. Yeah. So I was saying that uh, I, I really hold uh, a lot of memories. For me, India is, uh, is really, uh, truthfully, my second country after Morocco because uh, nine years is a long time in my life. Uh, my kids have spent uh, a lot of time there. We still, uh, they sometimes stick, uh, still talk about their memories there. Um, and uh, in fact, uh, recently for the people who follow my tweet, my tweets, uh, you, could, uh, you could see that uh, uh, many, many times I follow what's going on. I, uh, whenever, uh, as soon as this virus uh, starts coming uh, all over the world, I thought about uh, how difficult would be uh, this in India as well, because I know it's like in Morocco, people like to, to go out a lot. And, and I tweeted about that. Uh, I, I, I want to take this opportunity to, to give my condolences to, because many people will watch this uh, to the, to the people who lost their loved ones, uh, especially in Calcutta, there was the virus plus the cyclone. Uh, and uh, and uh, I wish that uh, all this hard time uh, goes away as soon as possible and the, the, the good life come back to all Indian people and especially football lovers. Wonderful. Everyone, the reviews show that they have, everyone's had a great time. They find it informative. So we hope to see you soon again, Mr. Karim Bencharifa. It was an absolute pleasure having you. No, no worries. Same here. And uh, my regards to everybody. I can see uh, the, the ones that I, that I get to know in this platform is Vinay Singh. I hope he's okay. And I hope, I hope he will excuse the, all the hard time I gave him to, to fight for his place as a goalkeeper. Uh, and even many times uh, I, I put him on the bench with a smile. So, so I wish him the best of luck. I know now he's, uh, uh, I think he's a coach. So I wish him the best of luck and to all the coaches. Thank you. A big smile on his face. So yeah, thank you, Karim sir. Sid, all over to you. Uh, thank you yeah. so much, sir. It was a pleasure having you here and uh, learning from you. We are getting a lot of reviews which say you have shared everything in a very easy manner and uh, you know learning from such a big coach it's an honor sir thank you so much for being a part of the webinar thank you sir thank you for having me thank you sir, sir. thank you so much take care all the best take care, sir thank you stay safe take care guys everyone bye, bye. Thank you.